ESP 40 miles north of San Francisco. That's where you'll find Sears Point Raceway. And we're ready to start the 16th race of the 1999 NASCAR Winston Cup season and continue the march to the championship. How do you spell success in NASCAR? Points. But the first three letters in Winston Cup champion are W-I-N, which Bobby Labonte has done two of the last three weeks. He learned hard lessons the hard way. For now, he's all smiles, but the numbers keep on changing. Just ask 31-year-old Jeff Burton. He had his day in the rain, but will he get his day in the sun? His first half charge has been flattened by two finishes outside the top 35 in the last five races. This week, he's reflected on the who, what, and why of this wreck here last year. The who was Dale Jarrett. This season, he's the point leader, two-time race winner, with seven straight top five finishes. But oh, forever on road courses. Racing is a numbers game. Jarrett may be number 88, but the big number today is 89. 89 is the margin of points between leader Dale Jarrett and second place Bobby Labonte. 89 was the first year the NASCAR Winston Cup Series came here to Sears Point. In the 10 races since, Dale Jarrett has three DNFs and has never finished higher than four. In fact, Jarrett, Labonte, and Jeff Burton have combined for 47 road course starts, but no victories and no finishes higher than fourth. In the numbers game today, the goal of these three leaders is to be the big winner. The hope is they don't end up the big loser. The hills of Northern California hold many fond memories for Winston Cup champion Jeff Gordon. He grew up as a youngster just around the corner in the tiny village of Vallejo. Last year, he grew up as a road course racer around the twisting corners of Sears Point Raceway. His win from the pole here proved to be the turning point in his quest for a third title. Following that victory, he reassumed and held the points lead all the way to the stage at the Waldorf in New York City. Once again today, the stage is set as Jeff Gordon has brought the same car he won with last year back to Sonoma for yet another start from the pole. But this year, the task is tall. Four DNFs in the first 15 events have shuffled him all the way back to fifth in the points of 349 behind Dale Jarrett. So even a win today wouldn't get him back on top, but it would mark a turning point for his climb back in the right direction. Speaking of turning points and direction, those are just a few of the questions asked by rookie Tony Stewart before attempting to qualify for his first ever road course stock car race. Well, the answers and the advice must have been excellent because the laugh was. The 28-year-old feed-off put his Pontiac on the outside front row. But realistically, few expect Stewart, with no previous road course experience, to be a serious contender here today. But this event does mark a turning point for his team. After today, they will have visited every style of track that the Winston Cup cars compete on. So as the second half of the season approaches, look for the Home Depot team to hit a few home runs. Three of the best road racers on the Winston Cup Series hope today's visit to Sonoma provides a turning point for their seasons. Mark Martin is the last driver to win on a road course since Jeff Gordon started his current streak. Martin's fourth career road course victory came here at Sears Point two years ago. Among active drivers, he's tops, finishing in the top five 64% of the time. Rusty Wallace leads all active drivers with six career victories on the road courses, but he hasn't tasted victory on a road course since he won here three years ago. Rusty hopes to turn that around today. Ricky Rudd is perhaps the best pure road racer of the bunch, known for his fancy footwork that many other drivers have tried to copy, but few have mastered. Rudd ranks third among active drivers, finishing in the top 520 out of his 39 road course races. His five current wins rank him second best, but he hasn't won on a road course since 1990, nearly a decade ago. During happy hour, Rudd served notice that he was ready to dominate this race. He was the fastest of the past, and he hopes that that speed enables him to extend his streak of winning at least one race a year since 1983. Martin and Wallace were right behind Rudd on the happy hour speed charts. They've already won this year. So Wallace is looking at today's race as an opportunity to get back into the top ten in points, while Martin hopes his Sears Point performance turns him back on the road to the championship. And so 43 NASCAR Winston Cup drivers are set to do something today they only do twice a year at Watkins Glen, New York during August and here at Sears Point Raceway in Sonoma, California. That is compete on a road course. 
They have a lot of challenges before them today because it's so much different, Ned, than what they do regularly on a racetrack. It certainly is, Bob. They go uphill, they go downhill, they make right-hand turns, they make left-hand turns. And consider this, there are 12 turns on this road course. That's 24 potential times that they have to mess up going into each turn and coming out of each turn. So, Benny, they got to really be on their P's and Q's. They really do, Ned. Not only is it tough on the drivers and the pit crews, it's also a mechanical exercise. Imagine what the engine goes through, down to 6,000 RPM back up to 9,000 RPMs, probably six, seven times a lap. And the transmission, some of these guys will shift maybe 12, 15 times per lap. And the brakes, they go down and turn around probably 130 miles per hour, have to slow to 60, 70 miles per hour to make that corner. The entire car takes a tremendous abuse here at Sears Point Raceway. After 15 events this year, Bobby Labonte, 89 points behind the points leader, Dale Jarrett. The front row here at Sears Point starts. Uh, first and second, and our fifth and sixth in the points standings with Terry Labonte in 10th position in the points. And as we focus in on the top five in the points, we notice that only two of them have wins on road courses. Jarrett, Labonte, and Burton don't have any, but Mark Martin has four wins on a road course, and Jeff Gordon has three. Martin has 21 top tens, and Jeff Gordon has nine top tens when they compete on road courses. ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports in the National Association for Stock Car Auto Racing, welcome you live to Sears Point Raceway in California. Here's the safe, the opening grid for the race. Presented by Everstart Walmart. Jeff Gordon on the pole. Not a new track record, but close to it. Tony Stewart will start outside of row number one. The same front row as at Daytona, the first race of the year. Jerry Nadeau, who started in second position last year, will start in third position this year. As we take a look back through the 43 cars and drivers who will be starting here, there are nine wins on a road course in that row there with Mark Martin and Darrell Waltrip. So several of the guys who are experienced on the road courses, including Ricky Rudd, didn't qualify particularly well, but we can always expect them to move up through the traffic rather quickly on road courses. As you look at the starting lineup, this is the essence part of the racetrack that these cars are going through. We'll be seeing the drivers swinging the cars back and forth as they go down from turn seven all the way down to turn 11. Of course, that's one of the places they get the car on fourth gear, one of the fastest parts of the racetrack, even though they are making right and left-hand turns through this area. Dale Jarrett, the points leader, starting way back in the 29th position, so he has a tall assignment ahead of him. Now we get back into those who took provisionals to get into this race, including Chad Little, Kevin LePage. Steve Park and Ernie Irvin also did, as did Rich Bickle and Robert Presley. And David Green got the final provisional, and he is the 43rd starter in today's race. We're set to go for 112 laps of racing in the St. Mark Craigan 350 from Sears Point Raceway. Pace car pulls off the racetrack. Here they come through turn number 12, the final one before they hit the start-finish line. And the green flag waves were underway. successfully from the Pennzoil copter cam. Now we see them heading down the chute toward turn number seven. Jeff Gordon has the lead. Jerry Nadeau has taken second position away from Tony Stewart. Three wide racing here at the end of the chute. That's one of the areas where we'll see most of the passing here this weekend and also entering turn number 11. Gordon has the lead. Jerry Nadeau, who started second last year, starts third this year and had the crash, of course, on the first lap last year, but has so far successfully negotiated lap one here in 99. There we see Rusty Wallace trying to get on the inside of Tony Stewart. Tony realizes he's there, does not go down. Rusty Wallace looks like we'll take over that third spot. Stewart, the 
rookie phenom taking it easy here in the first few laps has fallen from second back to fourth position. That's Joe Nemechek right behind him. Here comes the rest of the field. There's Mark Martin. Oh, Arnold swung way out to the outside on turn two. I don't see dust up there, so I guess he made it through the corner. On board with Bobby Labonte, the Circuit City. Interstate Batteries on board camera. There's Dale Earnhardt. He was shown in 21st position after the first lap. Oh, and we see the four car, Bobby Hamilton, looks like he smoked the tires, getting turn seven. And they've got to be careful about that, Ned, because if they stop that tire too long, they'll put a flat spot on it and cause a tremendous vibration. They certainly will. You have to be very, very careful about that. And there's not a lot of rubber on those tires. They could wear through the fabric to the fabric very quickly. Bobby Hamilton had such a good run here last year. That's 17 laps. And now, once again, Tony Stewart drops back another position as Joe Nemechek has taken over the fourth spot. He got passed by a car each time going into turn 11, and that's the best place to pass. He's going to try to come back on the inside of Nemechek, but that won't work at this point of the racetrack. Joe Nemechek won the first road course race he ever entered in the early part of his racing career in 1988 at Sebring in the United Stock Car Alliance Series. So he's another guy that we'll look for to run well here this afternoon. Had himself a good qualifying run. And right now, Tony Stewart, we're watching Tony Stewart. He is just getting some laps in, letting these guys go. He's not trying to race with anyone. He's racing the racetrack. And at this point of the race, that's the wisest thing he can do. It's been 12 years since he competed on a road course. That was when he was 16 years old in a go-kart. And right now, Tony Stewart has fallen from second back to fifth position. We'll take a break and be right back with more of the St. Mark Craigan 350 from Sears Point. Sonoma Valley and the nearby Napa Valley, of course, produces some of the finest wines in the entire world, buried in some of these kegs and the rich, fertile soil, produces these incredible vineyards that we see up and down the highway as we come to and from Sears Point Raceway. As you can tell, the caution is out, and John Kernan has the report. Butch Gilliland stopped out on the race course. I just talked to his crew. They say that Butch radioed them and told him he thinks something under the hood broke, something in the motor broken for Butch Gilliland, putting him out. He started 40th and finished 24th here at Sears Point last year and is going to apparently be the first out this year just at the start-finish line. Just before it, we saw the big plume of smoke. He quickly got the car stopped down by turn number one, but has the assistance now of a tow truck. We'll be right back. Sears Point Raceway in Sonoma, California. We are under caution. Butch Gilliland's car stalling down in turn number one. It is off the racetrack. We had to kind of leave Cleveland in a hurry to get out here to this NASCAR Winston Cup race. Let's go back to Cleveland for a recap. Here's Paul Payne. All right, thank you very much, Paul, for the update. Here at Sears Point, we have completed five laps with the caution out because of the Butch Gilliland car being disabled down in turn number one. Down to Bill Weber. Yeah, one of the early problems here could belong to Ricky Rudd, who had a good qualifying run and runs well on a road course. Potential overheating problem on his tied four temperatures well above the 220, 225 mark. They told him under caution to keep your nose clean, get as much air to it as possible. To Jerry Punch. Jerry Nadeau has been told by his filers that where he's getting killed is from turn 11 up through turn 1, 2, and 3. He said Gordon's getting incredible bite, able to pull away. But once the tires wear a little bit, Nadeau should come on. Where Nadeau is better is from turn 7 down to the S's all the way to turn 11. He pulls up on Gordon and pulls away from Wallace. So Nadeau said, i got to use my strength coming out of turn 7 to try to hang with Jeff Gordon. Bob? Just about to go back to green. You see them heading toward turn number 11. The lights atop the pace car are out. By the way, a 2000 Monte Carlo, which will be used in NASCAR Winston Cup competition next year, is the pace car for this event. Checking some onboard cameras. We'll see Tom Hubert in the race. There's our Circuit City Ricky Rudd as the tied onboard camera. That Circuit City was Bobby Labonte as the cars come down for the green. Start the pick up speed. Green, 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 green. An elevation change of 160 feet from the bottom there up to the top of the hill about right here. So you're really headed uphill with the nose of the car pointed nearly straight up. 
And you come through turns one and two. And this time, Nadu is sticking right with Jeff Gordon. But again, we'll see if Gordon is able to pull away when they get down to turn number 11. They're headed right now to turn seven. Stand with him so far. Boy, oh, right oh, hard wow. into there. Picked up a lot of space. But look at Rusty Wallace, who also closes in on Nadu. Now they head up through the S's. They're down through the S's. Yeah. Well, they're coming downhill here now. You'll never see Jeff Gordon pulled away by about a car length. Through turn 10, the right-hander. Now they'll charge down to turn 11. And we'll see if, if Nadu has that same break. And look at him gain on Jeff Gordon going in the corner. Now here's where the crew told him that Jeff was getting away. And you can see he opens up some distance as he came off that turn. Boy, getting traction off there is very, very important. and 12th position. Behind Walter is Bobby Hamilton, then Rudd. Then have, here comes Kyle Petty, Bobby Labonte, and Kenny Wallace. We're on board with Bobby. Looks like he tried to think about making a pass on Kyle, but knew it was not the right point on the racetrack to do that. Here's Mike Skinner in the car number 31. Trying to make a pass. On Kenny Wallace. Children's cars running together on the racetrack with Skinner leading Earnhardt right now, 18th and 19th position. And what's Skinner dive to the inside? Trying to outbreak Kenny Wallace. Uh, Kenny Wallace does not go down and get spun out. Normally that's what happens. The car goes down, they tap it in the rear quarter, and around he goes. So but he maintains the spot. Yeah, Kenny got good traction off the outside and kept his position. On board with Wally Dallenbach. Running back in the 21st spot. That's Kenny Irwin Jr. up ahead in the Haviland car. Another very experienced road racer. Two-time Trans Am champion. He has lost a position since the drop of the green flag. From Tom Hubert's onboard camera, the back bumper looks back at Dale Jarrett back in the 31st position. Is the Ford Quality Care Ford. And Ned, he is struggling these early laps. Well, he's had a tough time getting through traffic so far. Now, whether he's uh, being patient or if the, the car just won't do any better, don't know. I expect he's being patient right now. Tom Hubert, one of those drivers who competes only on the road courses. He ran 41st here last year and 36th at uh, Watkins Glen in 1998. Started 10th here last year. And those finishes do not indicate how well he ran. It, he had mechanical problems in both of those. Whoa! Events. Little contact. And hey. Kyle Petty, it looks like he has taken a shortcut someplace. But it cost him a lot, too, Benny. Because... Uh, he lost several positions. Yes, he did. He lost several positions there. He's back now in 33rd position. Big loss for Kyle Petty, who was up in the top 15, I believe. Well, here's Gordon, who continues to lead. He led 48 laps here last year en route to his victory, and he has led the first nine laps of our race here in 1999. Will let all the field go by and show you how much distance Dale Jarrett has between himself and the leader of the race. It's a long way. Boy, a long way. There he is behind John Andretti and ahead of Johnny Benson, who's celebrating his birthday today. DJ did get by Tom Hubert. And moved up to 30th position, actually 29th, because Kyle Petty moved ahead of him as well. Petty trying to go to the inside of Hubert, trying to regain some of the spots he lost at this portion of the racetrack last lap. That was a paycheck sport of Brett Bodine. Tommy Hubert, I saw him back there racing with Kyle Petty. 
up this hill. And like you said, Bob, this is a tremendous elevation change as they climb this hill up to turn two, three. Oh, battle for second spot. Oh, Rusty was hard on the brakes to try to avoid hitting the nine car of Jerry Nadeau. He, he tried to outbreak him going into that turn, but couldn't quite do it, but he made a gallant effort. On NASCAR today, you heard Benny say that the two prime passing areas here are headed toward turn seven and turn 11, and turn seven is where Rusty tried to make that move on Jerry Nadeau, but was unsuccessful. Now for a taste of the race, our State Fair Corn Dog on board telemetry will show how Rusty shifts from second to third, increases the RPMs and the miles an hour as he crosses the line and again heads up the hill. Look at that 9,000 RPMs there for a moment. Now he'll shift back gears, third gear, probably second gear there as he accelerates, well, maybe third gear as he accelerates across. Now, that was, once again, this was the spot last time he tried to get position on Nadeau. Will he try it again? No, he was not close enough that time to do it. Jerry Nadeau, if you wonder why he's such an accomplished road racer, he spent a lot of time in Europe running on road courses. He was the 1996 Formula Opel European Series competitor was sixth in the points overall that year and also in 1991 he ran formula fords and was the rookie of the year jerry exactly bob and actually he just had the highest finish ever for an american over there in the british formula ford series brian herda a number of drivers that jimmy bastard have been over there to run that series but no one had finished as high as this young man jerry they had done a very accomplished road racer everyone thought he would go open wheel racing but his long lifelong desire had been to come to stock cars maybe that'll pay off today with a stock car on a road course and what happened here last year i'm afraid will ever haunt him because everybody always mentions it when they talk about jerry nadu how he qualified in second position and then just after the green flag drop this is what happened he goes off course here trying to get the lead cuts across the infield and things just go all wrong for jerry he took the lead but as you can tell it was very very short-lived so he started second last year, but finished last in 43rd position. Right now, Nadu is in second, holding off the challenge of Rusty Wallace. But while they're battling for position, Jeff Gordon has lengthened out his lead to almost two and a half seconds. There's the interval between second and third, and the leader, Jeff Gordon, with 12 laps completed at Sears Point Raceway. Mark Reagan, 350K from Sears Point, 14 laps old, 112 laps make up the distance. Jeff Gordon has the lead. This is one of the best battles on the racetrack. Jerry Nadeau holding on to second, and Rusty Wallace in the third position. Tonight at 12.30 a.m., news continues its coverage of Women's World Cup as Mexico kicks off against Italy. That's at 12.30 a.m. Eastern Time, 9.30 out here on the West Coast. For more, log on to ESPN.com, part of the Go Network, go.com. While we watch this continuing battle here and Jeff Gordon continue to lead, Johnny Benson has been off course in the last few minutes. Mentioned a few moments ago, this is his birthday. It's his 36th birthday, but things not going well for him in the opening laps as he is now dropped back to the tail of the field. And Johnny, John Kernan has an update on Johnny Benson. That's okay, Bob. I've been called Johnny Kernan okay. from uh, time to time. Johnny <laughs> Benson, uh, that can see some damage on the right front, behind the right front tire. He radioed into the crew. They asked him if he needed a pit to fix anything. He told him he thought, no, that the car was all right. But he did lose a lot of time out there on the racetrack after that mishap. To Dr. Jerry Punch. And a moment ago in commercial, Darrell Waltrip uh, got off the course and had a vibration till he flat spotted the tires and began to vibrate. So he brought the Kmart Route 56 Ford down pit road. And uh, Philippe Lopez and the crew put four fresh tires, and he was down and away. Also had some minor sheet metal damage in the right rear, where there may have been some contact with what they were saying was possibly the 43 car. 
So Waltrip now back in 42nd and Benson 41st. The only car out of the race so far is Butch Gilliland. Here is the battle for the fifth spot. Joe Nemechek has it. Tony Stewart wants it. Now, Tony Stewart for the first 15, 16 laps has just been riding around, following these guys, trying to run the line, trying to figure out how to use the brakes and what have you. And it looks like right now that he said, I think I'll do a little racing. He's closing on Nemechek, trying to take that spot away. And Mark Martin now begins to close in on the third place car of Rusty Wallace. So this battle here becomes a three car fight for second position. Yeah, he was over a couple of seconds behind, Bob, not too long ago, and has closed that gap in a hurry. The last lap, Mark Martin was one mile per hour faster than anyone else in the top six as he tries to get on the inside of Rusty Wallace. He's still trying to get alongside Rusty Wallace. We saw him last night in happy hour. He Got has, it. he goes down to first gear there. So just imagine how he jumps off that corner. And that might, that might have been what it took to get by Rusty Wallace. Mark Martin looking for his fifth career win on a road course. He won here in 97 and has won three times at Watkins Glen in 93, 94, and 95. I mentioned just a moment ago, Tony Stewart's been watching. See, he's going to try to get down in turn 11. Oh, he tried it, he tried it, but he got off the gas so much and lost his momentum that Nemechek, in fact, came back on the outside. It looked like it might have caved in that left front of uh, Tony just a little bit. We'll see if that affects the car as the laps go along. Well, wow, Mark Martin is going somewhere, isn't he? Look at him yes. go over those Ooh. rumble scores. <laughs> That's hard. It sure is. That's Jimmy Spencer. And how about Jimmy Spencer? Running in seventh front now. Had a terrific run at Pocono last week. As we show you a Napa Field summary. Bound for second spot. Mark Martin's on the inside of Nadu. Comes off the corner. Takes it over. Look at that thing. Get traction wow. off the right corner. Before that is what you need here. And he has it. Now, he's about uh, four, a little over four seconds behind Jeff Gordon. Let's see if he can close that gap. I don't think it's going to take long then for him to close down on the gap. Spencer, who's running in seventh position, is Jeff Burton. Well, Jeff Burton started 12th there and has climbed the eighth, but a few laps ago, as he went past his crew on the pit straight here at Sears Point, he told them that the car seems to sputter a little bit in the right-handers. He thinks it may be a carburetor problem. They've told him to work with the throttle a little bit to try and clear it up, but he's having a little problem on the right-handers. So Jeff Burton... Closing in on the 23 car of Jimmy Spencer. Well, Gordon has the lead, but Mark Martin now begins to close in. On lap 13, Martin was 5.9 seconds behind Jeff. And on lap 17, closed it to 4.1 and also took over the second position. Look at that. Three of the five laps that Mark Martin ran were 74.7. All three of those laps faster than any lap that Jeff Gordon ran. And how consistent that Mark Martin is getting around this racetrack. Jerry Punch. So many teams, BP, come here with brand new race cars, not Mark Martin. This Valvoline 40 driving today is four years old. He finished second with it back in 1996. He sat on the pole and won with it here in 97. But his most impressive performance today came here last year when he had trouble in qualifying. Went, started in the back of the pack and had to go back in the pack two other times for a cut tire and a spin. They said he passed 123 cars last year here to finally finish sixth. An impressive performance with this car very good at Sears Point Raceway. Tony Stewart trying to put some pressure on Joe Nemechek, but Stewart is busy now with Jimmy Spencer right behind him. What these drivers are trying to do when they go in turn 11, these, when they drive up right on the back bumper, dive on the inside, they're trying to get that car in front by Joe Nemechek to make a mistake. They want him to drive down the corner just a little bit too hard and slide up so they can drive by. But as good as these race car drivers are, very seldom does that happen. Spencer got a little loose coming off of that turn. Broke the rear wheel first, but he doesn't get back in. Staying right there close on Tony Stewart. 
When Mark Martin took over second position, he was 4.1 seconds behind. Actually, Jeff Gordon is pulling away. That interval is now up to 4.3 seconds. So it's Gordon followed by Mark Martin, Jerry Nadeau, Rusty Wallace, and Joe Nemechek in the same Mark Reagan three the games are happening. BP and I were down there on Thursday morning and things were gearing up and I'm sure there are thousands and thousands of people down there right now as San Francisco has really turned out in big shape for the X Games. Well, it looks like Rusty Wallace is dropping back here. He's back to sixth place. And about to uh, lose that. There's the car number 99 of Jeff Burton right behind him. He ran up on him pretty quickly but settles in now on this part of the racetrack. Meanwhile, that received Tony Stewart on the inside of Jerry Nadeau. He'll take over that third spot. So now Tony Stewart being laying back, taking it easy. Check out the road racer, Tony Stewart. And not taking it easy any longer is Jeff Gordon. Uh, we talked during the break about how when Mark Martin got into second position and was 4.1 seconds behind, Jeff decided that uh, it was time to get going. Ray said, look, now Mark Martin's in second. He's been gaining on you. Said, Jeff said, okay, I'll go. And since then, he has been the fastest car on the racetrack. Now here's Jeff Burton taking the position away from Rusty Wallace. So indeed, Wallace is not nearly as fast as he was a few laps ago. And Robert Presley has taken his car behind the wall with Jasper Inch in his car. As has Kevin LePage. And we mentioned this is Benson's birthday. It uh, was Kevin LePage's 37th birthday yesterday, but right now LePage and Benson are both off the track. Well, LePage made a, a scheduled, unscheduled pit stop, Bob, and got a lap down. He's still out on the racetrack. Just went back out there, so he is shown in the 31st position now. One of the cars on the move, John Andretti, who just passed Sterling Marlin and put himself up there to 18th position. And he started back in the 31st position. So he is definitely on the move. And we have a car into the tire barriers. That's Steve Park. This is at the exit of turn number two. I think that's where Richard Freddy hit the wall here exactly. a few years ago. It sure is. Yeah, it's a full course caution. First time this afternoon. Comes on lap number 25. Ooh, Park is way up on the tires and the uh, the barriers. John Kernan has a report. They just talked to Steve on the uh, radio, and they asked him if he was okay. He said, yeah, I'm all right. Then they asked him, what happened? He said, I have no idea what happened. Well, it was incredible, is all we can say. I tell you what, that's not going to be easy to get off there. Well, I guess they just hook to it and just jerk it off. But, folks, look here what happened. Steve Parker's going to come to watch as he backs in the fence. Overturns completely in the air, comes down on all four. Looks like those guys at the X Games, the way they do those uh, <laughs> skates. Wow. Man, oh, man. That was a... Well, we talk about the X Games. That's when racing turns into an extreme sport. We just hope that Steve is okay. They're talking with him, and he's moving around inside. He's taking the helmet off, so that is good news. But what a scary ride for Steve Park. There, there he, he comes out. Okay, that's great. Come out of there. <laughs> he thought to put his pencil oil hat on, that's for sure. <laughs> Man, but how frustrated is he right now? Well, he's had a tough weekend. He spun on his qualifying attempt on Friday. He didn't race here last year, of course, was still recovering from his injury suffered at Atlanta. He did run at Watkins Glen last year. That was his first start on a road course. Finished in 18th position, but right now Steve Park is out of commission as the car has gone off the track, hit the tires, overturned completely in the air, and then come down on all four, but Steve Park walks away uninjured. But extremely busy. Jeff Gordon has the work completed on his car already, but Mark Martin has a faster stop and pulls out ahead of Jeff. Mark Martin's trip Pocono last week was just tremendous, and they continue today with another great pit stop. Here comes Tony Stewart, Jeff Burton, Joe Nemechek, and the others as they have taken advantage of this caution period to make pit stops. 
I was going to ask you guys, how many will they be making this afternoon? We've completed 26 out of 112 laps. Can they go the rest of the way with just one more? Well, I think it'll be marginal, Bob, but it depends on how many laps we run under caution here or maybe caution laps later. They should be able. I was talking to some of them in the garage area yesterday, and they said they could go up to 42 laps. And so uh, 42 and 42 is 84, and we got, uh, what, uh, 86 to go. So... Petty still in the pits, and Brett Bodine is likewise. He, however, has the hood up on the Paychex 4, John Kernan. And the hood is up. They're putting the air cleaner back on. Apparently, there was a problem with the uh, throttle linkage and with the carburetor as Brett had to rev the engine. Apparently, it was sticking just a little bit on the throttle, so now they're putting that back together. Let's go to Bill Weber. And Kyle Petty is on pit road for an extended stay. He spun early in this race in turn 11, and he told his crew right after that, get ready because the toes been knocked out of whack. And he said he would wait to the first caution to get it fixed. This is the caution that, uh, first caution, caution period since that time. As you can see, they're working on the toe, trying to pull some of the sheet metal away from the front tires. And Kyle Petty sits here waiting for the field to come by. He does not want to lose a lap to Dr. Punch. Uneventful pit stops for Jeff Gordon and Mark Martin. Both cars, four tires, two cans of fuel. Mark Martin about three tenths of a second quicker than Gordon, but he was further down pit road. He pulled right out in front of Jeff Gordon, thus being able to get back on the, on the track first. Rusty Wallace was fading just prior to the caution coming out. His car was loose. They made some major adjustments. Air pressure in the front, a track bar adjustment, a wedge adjustment, trying to get the car tighter on the right-hand turns. Back to Bill Weber. Okay, other guys that pitted down here. Outstanding pit stop for Bobby Labonte. They did make an air pressure adjustment. Other than that, no major changes. Jeff Burton said his car has been tight. He's been spinning the rear wheels. They went to go ahead and try and correct that problem. They also wanted to take tape off the front of the 99 and tape off the front of the 18. The 99 was concerned about what his temperatures were going to be in traffic. The 99, they just wanted to pull them to help keep the temperatures down. Also, ice and water fluids for all the drivers here to John. Dale Jarrett was in. He told the crew before making that pit stop, the car just doesn't want to seem to turn. So they made a track bar adjustment. They also made an air pressure adjustment to the right rear to try and help make that car turn a little bit better for DJ. Let's take a look at our Coke pit summary showing you where everybody was when they came in and where they are now. Jeff Gordon lost a position. Mark Martin gained one. Tony Stewart stayed the same. Jeff Burton gained two spots and Joe Nemechek remained in fifth position. And now the second page, Nadu losing two, Wallace staying the same. And Rusty Wallace is without his right rear tire changer, his rear tire changer, Mark Armstrong, Hollywood went back home last night. It is a proud papa today. And congratulations to Mark. And here's why we're under our first full course caution today and on lap number 25, Steve Clark into the tires. Up and over completely in the air, landing on all four. Steve Park walked away from the incident. And the track is being cleared. And they've done a pretty good job getting that car off the location that it ended up in. I, I wondered how this is going to get off, Bob. It's simple. Put a cable on it and pull. That's right. <laughs> and disregard what it's on. And here's how they did it. Just simply uh, hook it onto the front end, and boom, there it went. It was not in good shape anyway, and uh, so there was no regard to keeping the car healthy. Back with more in just a moment. Raceway, Sonoma, California, for the 16th race of the 1999 NASCAR Winston Cup season, the St. Mark Cragen 350. About to complete 29 laps. We are under caution. However, we do believe they'll be going back to green next time around. Jerry Punch. In Major League Baseball, managers put out a starting lineup. Now, if you were to look at a starting lineup for today's Rusty Wallace Miller Light team, it's going to be rearranged quite a bit. Bob Tracy, normal gas man, are injured at Dover, still on the men. Doug Engel, gas in the car. Hollywood, they call him. Mark Armstrong, normal right rear tire changer, rushed to the airport last night by the California Highway Patrol. He got home to Gastonia, and 38 minutes ago from right now, he and wife Lori, as you heard Benny say, had a little boy, six pound, ten ounces, Mark Armstrong. Now, who's changing the rear tires? Ben Leslie, the normal front tire carrier and that means Robin Pemberton the crew chief and former tire carrier goes back into action today three swaps here in the Miller Lite Rusty Wallace pits let's check in with Bill 
Well, on Ricky Rudd's tied team, they had to make one change because they lost one crew member to a knee injury. So Ron Liddell, who changes tires on the three truck in the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series, was flown here after the truck race yesterday at Watkins Glen by the 10 team so he could change the rear tires today. He's an assistant engine man on that three truck team, but they knew he was good. They needed to get him here. They worked out a deal with Richard Childress, and they flew him in just so they would have what they called a good tire changer because they lost the guy to injury for this race here at Sears Point. John Kernan. Brett Lodine was having a problem with the throttle. It wasn't so much sticking in that it was just very, very hard to push, and it felt like it was kind of sticking up every now and then. just wasn't feeling very smooth. They sprayed some lubricant on it. They also adjusted the heim joint. Jerry Kennan says that they, the problem has been solved. Robert Presley still behind the wall, replacing the transmission. And we're going green here at Sears Point to resume the race. Pace car off the track, pulling into an area called Gilligan's Island, which also houses some of the... Uh, ready. 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 Go, 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 go. Great, 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 great. Mark Martin led 32 laps at Pocono. He takes the lead here, and for every lap he leads in 1999, Valvoline donates $20 to the... Big brothers and big sisters are hoping to make a million dollars this year. So far, they've raised 123,104. They also donate for a win and for a poll. Now we're going to see whether or not Jeff Gordon was as good is as good now as he was earlier when he was able to pull away from Mark Martin. Looked like he tried to take the lead up in turn two. Didn't quite work. We'll see what can happen in turn seven. No. Nope. I think he'll ride there a little bit and sort of size Mark up and see where he's best. Oh, someone spun. Is that Earnhardt that spun up in turn seven? Yes, it was. He was running in 11th position, loses several spots as just about everybody goes by. Earnhardt finally gets the car righted and away he goes. Struck a little bit of damage to the right rear quarter panel or the bumper back there, but it got tapped to cause the spin or if it was something that uh, happened as a result of the spin. Let's see if we can see what happened. He goes in the corner, and I guess right there he got tapped by Schrader, looks like. And Look around like he goes. Bill Elliott gets in the dirt over there. Yeah. So that's going to put him way back in 39th position. Last car on the lead lap. Kevin LePage, the only car not on the lead lap of those still on the racetrack. Park, of course, is out. So is Gilliland. And as we indicated just a few moments ago, Robert Presley is off the track. Here's an Napa Field summary. The manufacturer's battle. With Ford showing the way at the moment. And Ford showing the way on the racetrack. Once again, they come down the chute, headed for turn number seven. Here's the point standings. And the nine car of Nadu off the pace. Yes, he yep. sure is. And down off to the, the track, probably yeah. goes. He's off the track to see if he can get through that sand without getting stuck. As long as he keeps it moving, he'll be okay. Got back on Tell the where you can, buddy. You got a line of them. This is his radio. The spotter. Uh, not so sure the car is going to make it back to the... That was Jerry. Yeah, I guess okay. it is. All right, here's Gordon taking the lead from Mark in turn 11 on lap 31. Jerry, what's wrong with Jerry Nadu? Well, it's apparently stuck in gear. He tried to shift it. It wouldn't come out of gear, and it's hung. And he just basically backed the, the rear end up and began to wheel off, and that's why he went off. He's going to try to make his way back around the pit road. And apparently it is hung in gear. He has not as yet told the crew which gear it is in. Well, he continues on the racetrack, so maybe it did come out as he goes down to turn 11. Gordon begins to pull away a little bit, so our question was answered. Was he as good before, after the caution, and after the tire change as he was before? Looks like he is. Yep. Good racing going on back here. Wally Dallenbach looks back on Ted Musgrave. Yeah, several cars have passed Wally here uh, in this last lap, Bob. I don't know if he's having a problem or what it is, but he is definitely dropping back. He's back in 21st position now. Ted Musgrave tries to take a spot away. The Remington Arms Ford Taurus. And I saw a puff of smoke from Wally Dallenbach's car. It's like an engine problem, maybe. And more go around. There's Elliot Sadler moving around. Chad Little. Wally's best finish in NASCAR Winston Cup competition came on a road course. 
second place at Watkins Plan in 95. John has the report on what's wrong with Dahlenbeck. Wally just radioed in and told the crew that there's something wrong with the brakes and also with the steering arm of the car as he has decided to pull it down pit, onto pit road. And earlier they had had a problem with the brakes overheating just a little bit. But Wally will pull it into pit road and the crew, led by Tony Furr, will go check it out. The brakes are dragging on it. They'll go underneath the hood. Let's go to Dr. Jerry Punch. Well, Jerry Nadu's car is hung in third gear. He tried to go up to fourth gear, and the car wouldn't come out of third. He was trying to shift it. That's when he got the wheel up and got off the course. He is obviously not able to run the full power just in third gear, but the crew's opted to leave him on the racetrack and hope for a yellow flag so they can get back in because it's going to take a while for him to lose a lap. And they're going to hope and pray to get a caution, a full course caution, I should say, to be able to come in and fix the transmission for the nine car. Here's 10th, 11th, and 12th. Kenny Irwin, Sterling Marlin, and Bobby Hamilton on board with Bobby Hamilton, the Briggs and Scranton on board camera. If you consider only road course points scored in 1998, Bobby Hamilton came out in fifth. He finished second here and finished 13th at Watkins Glen. Oh, 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 Bobby, Bobby Labonte. Labonte spun yeah. out down there. And the, yes, he did. He spun out in turn 11. Gets it going again. A lot of cars passed him. Bonnie loses a lot of track position with a spin down in turn number 11. Has the car going again, though. Climbing up the hill. He's back in 21st position across the line in 21st position. Everyone knows turn 11 is a favorite place to pass. Everyone tries it there. And there's a lot of contact in 11. Here's from his onboard camera what happened. Like he went in there slow enough, okay. And wow. then uh, you wonder maybe if he got tapped there. It didn't look like there was anybody behind him anyway. Just when he got on the gas, yeah. it uh, came be. around on him. Yeah. And speaking of scoring points, when you consider points scored only in the last six races, Bobby Labonte has scored the most. He has outpointed Dale Jarrett, who's the current overall points leader, by 20 in the last six races. We'll be back with more live coverage in a moment of the same Mark Cragen 350 to 1.1 second lead on Mark Martin at the same Mark Cragen 350. The Pennzoil Copter Cam having these overhead shots as the leaders work their way through turn number six down through the chute headed for turn seven. And the pace is picked up. These cars are running one mile per hour faster than they ran that first segment before the pit stop. So obviously all crews made some slight adjustments to the cars, made them just a little bit better. Down to John Kernan. Wally Dahlenbach is taking his car into the garage area where the crew is going to work on it to try and solve the brake problem. Wally uh, said it almost felt as if the uh, brake pads had uh, kind of melted or welded themselves onto the rotors. So uh, what Tony Furr is planning on doing is taking the rotors off and replacing the rotor caliper assemblies and then get Wally back out on the racetrack. But right now they're all pretty upset because they thought they had a good shot at a good run for today's race. So he and Robert Presley, the only two cars off the racetrack. Jeff Burton has taken third position from Tony Stewart and while we were away a few minutes ago Rusty Wallace took fifth away from Joe Nemechek. Jeff Burton has come up from 12th starting position to third having a great run here today is Burton at 2.7 seconds behind. Let's take a look at what happened to Bobby Labonte. We speculated that maybe he got a little tap or a look from Ricky Rudd's in-car camera. There's Jimmy Spencer right in front of him, dips down on the inside of Bobby Labonte, and right there was a little bit of contact made, and it sent Bobby spinning around down on the asphalt. Looked like Jimmy Spencer hit a bump or something. All of a sudden, his car just washed out right in the side of the Interstate Batteries Pontiac. And it's put Labonte back to 21st spot. Steve Park is back in the garage area talking to Steve Meal down to the area where this is happening. And we'll walk in here and see if we can get Steve. He's talking over with Paul Andrews and company. It's good to see you. Wild ride. What happened? Well, first of all, I'd like to tell my mom. I know she's home right now watching that. I'm okay. Uh, just a little sore. And if you, if you look down in here, it looks like the tire come off the wheel. We, we've never seen anything like this before. And... Uh, 
you know, the, here at Sonoma with the road course and everything else, the, the front wheels get real hot because of the brakes and stuff like that. And um, we're not really sure. Like I said, I don't think it was a flat tire as much as we might have just rolled it up off the wheels. So uh, whatever it was, it's just uh, it's unfortunate. The Pennzoil car is running good in the beginning, and we're just riding around buying our time trying to avoid something like this. And it's just disappointing. It has been a good weekend for me here. So it's my first time here. Uh, I'd, ha I'd have to say I'd be looking forward to coming back, but right now, I don't know. We're just going to have to go home and try to make these things better. You think this happened before you got airborne, Steve? Yeah, it definitely did. It. We, I just radioed in a lap beforehand that the car started to get real loose for no reason whatsoever, and going down a straightaway past the uh, the pits, you know, the car just didn't feel right, and going down into turn one, it just, it just dropped down on the right front and headed straight off the racetrack, and... I mean, I was just along for the ride. The only thing I could do was just lock the brakes down and, and hope for the best. And uh, the good Lord was with me today because uh, we were able to walk out and just shows that these guys back in the shop are building some safe race cars. Glad to see you, and so is your mom. <laughs> Thanks. Well, you can say that again. That was a very, very scary ride. We're watching 18th on back. Dale Jarrett running 18th. That's Skinner behind him. Ward Burton and Bobby Levani. Actually, Jarrett just took over the 17th position from the 31 car of Mike Skinner. They've really been doing some dicing around in, in this group of cars. There's Bobby Levani looking on the outside of Ward Burton in the car number 22, but couldn't uh, do anything in that turn. guys are running back about 21 seconds behind the leader of the race and now we see Rusty Wallace has taken fourth away from Tony Stewart. And that's about six and a half seconds behind the leader Jeff Gordon and Mark Martin is starting to put a little heat on Jeff Gordon. Last lap Mark Martin was a little quicker than Jeff Gordon. Not much but a little bit. Interval between first and second is just a little more than one second, one and a quarter seconds to be exact. There is how much that translates to on the racetrack. And not too far behind is the third place car of Jeff Burton. There is Rusty, and he's pursued hotly by Tony Stewart. Yeah, Rusty got around Tony, but he hasn't gotten away from him. There's Joe Nemechek behind them. He's hanging right in there, too. Lowe's field summary shows you the point standings. Rusty at the moment is up to ninth position, up two positions. And we have a car smoking badly through the S's as we see everybody else coming across the start finish line. The 19 car of Hubert is smoking badly. There is Bobby Hamilton as he runs 10th behind Kenny Irwin. And that's a, a good run for Kenny Irwin. If he can just stay in there and Work his way forward a couple more spots. That will be a terrific run to the Texaco Havlin for Taurus. There is the 19 car of Hubert that we talked about a few moments ago, smoking badly as it went through the S's in front of us, and he's made it toward the pit area, and they go to work on it, John Kernan. And Tom Hubert has shut off the engine. They have an oil leak. In fact, just uh, before he pulled it into the pits, one of the cars behind him said, radioed their crew and said he's putting oil down he's putting oil down he's putting oil down the 19 cars putting oil down and yes they open the hood and there is an oil leak so now they're going to get a new line to put it on the car and then they're going to put uh, oil into the car and they think that the engine is all right he had 60 pounds of oil pressure whenever on the gauge whenever he pulled it into the pits Here's the 19 car on board camera. The Bradford White water heater's on board camera. Watch Earnhardt's car as he goes down the corner. And we see something hanging from the right rear of Earnhardt's car. I'm not sure exactly what that is. I, I think I saw that, Benny, just after he spun up there. But, but he knocked it off. And, and it went under. It could have gone under Tom Hubert's car and possibly cut an oil line or something. So that had been hanging on there flapping for a long time and finally came off. Hmm. Well, that could very definitely explain the problem experienced by Hubert as they continue to work on his car. Just about the same interval, one and a quarter seconds between the leader, Jeff Gordon, and Mark Martin. Jeff Burton is third, followed by Rusty Wallace and Tony Stewart. We'll be right back. Point Raceway in Sonoma, California. 43 of 112 laps completed in the Save Mark Cragen 350. A lot of activity in the Bay Area this weekend here at Sears Point and just south of here. Everybody's talking about the X Games. 
Down the Sonoma River and across the Golden Gate Bridge into the city by the bay, San Francisco. You'll find Piers 30 and 32, and that's where the X Games are happening, the extreme sports Olympics that everyone is talking about, including Jeff Gordon. The reigning NASCAR Winston Cup champ visited the X Games earlier this week, and he got to meet the Jeff Gordon of skateboard Burt, Tony Hawk, one of his heroes. Jeff and wife Brooke moved to the top of the Burt ramp to take a look. No doubt about it, Gordon is a big X Games fan. I grew up around this area and kind of grew up as a as a skateboarder and bike rider and all that stuff and love the X Games. And man, when I knew that they were going to be this close, I said, hey, we're there. We have got to go by and check this out. And I want to meet Tony Hawk. And I got to do that. So big thrill for me already this weekend. The half pipe, man. The half pipe is what it's all about. Uh, you know, I think I just messed around with skateboards enough to know how difficult it is to do what these guys do and uh, how much talent and practice that it takes. And, uh, you know, I mean, I just, I really, I envy him in a way and uh, jealous in other ways. You know, I, I tell you, it's, it's really awesome to see him do what they do. The X Games are awesome. I mean, they, these are kids and people that are doing things that normal human beings don't want to do. And uh, I can relate that to auto racing a little bit. But, uh, you know, it, it's just great that ESPN and everybody is getting behind this. And, and I love to see it happening because I'm a huge fan of it. Our coverage of the X Games begins tonight at 9 o'clock Eastern with Bike Stunt Street, Skateboard Burt, and the women's speed climbing. Jeff was still talking about his visit to the X Games and getting to meet Tony Hawk when he returned back north to the Sonoma Valley and Sears Point Raceway. Awesome, man. I tell you, I have so much appreciation for those guys. I got to watch the guys, skater, skateboarders on the half pipe. Got to meet Tony Hawk and... Uh, you know, if I could do something else, you know, everybody's always asked me, if you could do anything else, I wish I could do that. I just don't have the talent to do that, and I'm getting over the hill for those guys. <laughs> yeah, he's over the hill, okay, in what, 27? <laughs> There's the Golden Gate Bridge, which connects our area here in the Napa and Sonoma Valleys to the city of San Francisco. Right now, Jeff Gordon is the leader of the race. He's got the slower car, Jerry Nadeau, between himself and second place, Mark Martin. So Nadeau did not get that caution that he needed. Still out there running around in third gear. Has gone a lap down. There's still 35 cars on the lead lap. David Green just went a lap down a few laps ago. And Martin is closing the gap. Yes, he is. He was just nine-tenths of a second the last time around. And it looks like he's closed it to even less than that. Could have been the way he caught uh, Nadu and practice where he caught him. Let's get an update on the Tom Hubert situation from John Kearney. Well, Bob, I talked to the crew, and they told me what the, they think might have happened is Tom ran over something out on the racetrack. It might have come up and knocked a fitting loose on the uh, oil line. It did not actually cut an oil line, but it not, might have knocked the fitting loose. So they came in, tightened it up, put oil in the car. It is all right. And Jerry Nadeau, after losing that lap, being lapped out on the track, now heads down pit road. So it could have indeed been that little piece of metal that was on the back of Dale Earnhardt's car that came off there in turn number 11 that resulted in that uh, oil line being knocked off. Here comes the battle for fourth, Tony Stewart and Rusty Wallace. They've done quite a bit of battling on the racetrack today. Did Stewart just get that spot back from Rusty? I was thinking Rusty was in front of Tony Stewart. What a great job this Tony Stewart is. We keep saying, well, here's where Tony Stewart will have a problem. We said that at Bristol. We said that at Martinsville. All the racetracks. Now we got to Sears Point. We knew he'd have problems here. I mean, after all, what you say? He hasn't been on a road course since in 12 years? Yeah, since he was 16. He'll never figure this deal out. <laughs> Wrong. Wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Every race this year, he has finished in the top 20, except two. He was 36th at Las Vegas and 28th at Daytona. But other than that, his worst finish was at Martinsville. Jerry has an update on Nadu. We got it out. Well, he just came down pit road. Newt Moore just came running across. Well, Newt, did you get it out of gear? Stuck yeah, out of we third? got it fixed. It had something jammed up in between the shifter. We filled it up with gas. We ought to be able to go one more stop. He should be okay here if we can just keep going one lap down. Leaders will have to fit and get gas. We won't. We should make our lap up and get a caution. Maybe we can get the thing back up to where it needs to be. 
Oh, uh, there's still some hope for the Jerry Nadeau team. There you go, guys. Don't ever, ever give up. But they wish now that they would have come in when it first happened. They might have, as quickly as they did it, then maybe they could have stayed on the lead lap. Back in 16th and 17th position, a couple of the top point contenders in the series this year, Dale Jarrett and Bobby Labonte, are running together. Jarrett has 16th and Labonte 17th. Now, Labonte started up in 14th spot, but we saw him spin when he had that contact with Jimmy Spencer down in turn 11, so he fell back several positions. DJ started back in, we're in the head about 29, 29th, so he's getting himself 13 spots. Oh, and he gets off the course, and Bobby Labonte goes by, and Whoa. DJ pulls back on. That could have been very, very costly. It was bad enough as it was, but he only lost one position and some uh, uh, distance out on the racetrack. Terry Labonte running right behind him. Terry is running in 18th position. There's Bill Elliott and Kenny Wallace running together just ahead of the 18 car now in 14th and 15th spot. These guys, it seems like, have been battling all race long. They have had a, a good battle out there, and Bobby Labonte has been gaining now you can see he's getting very close to them. Lamonte closing in on Bill Elliott. Take a look again at what happened to Dale Jarrett from the copter cam. Goes down in the corner, and it looks like he just got in the corner a little bit faster than he could than he could make the corner, and goes out in the dirt and gravel, and he's lucky he's able to keep control and not get out and get stuck. Yeah, that, that sand is pretty deep out there, and uh, if you get the car slowed down too much in there, she'll just dig right on down into the sand, then you got to wait for the record to come. And fortunately, most of that stuff is sand rather than gravel, because if it were gravel, and there, if there is any sharp rocks in there, certainly that would be able to cut one of these tires. Bonnie is now caught right up to both of these guys, both... Elliott and Kenny Wallace. Another Lowe's Field summary for you. Again, Elliott tries to get the position from Kenny Wallace, and he may do it this time as Wallace relinquishes it. Yeah, Elliott went way down at the bottom of that turn, and Bobby Levine is going to go by as well. Got good traction off that turn. Has good horsepower under the hood and was able to put it to use. Kenny Wallace started 22nd and finished 22nd here last year. At the moment, runs in the 16th spot. There's Jeff Gordon with a 1.2 second advantage over Mark Martin. In quite a bit of racetrack, back to the third place car of Jeff Burton. Yeah, he's back seven and a quarter seconds behind. Running all alone. There's Tony Stewart. There's Rusty, Joe Nemechek, and Ricky Rudd, who faded for a while, but now is charging back toward the front. Started in 15th position, and we can see trying to get by Rusty Wallace. He's out on the inside. Looks like he'll take that fifth spot away. Sixth spot away, I'm sorry, because Nemechek has been able to get by Rusty Wallace as well. Rusty, same thing happened before. He runs about 15, 20 laps and starts fading. Yeah, he gets uh, the tires heated up. His chassis just doesn't seem to work as well as it does when the tires are cooler and newer. Rudd crash, as we call with Jeffrey Bodine last year on lap 89 in turn number 11. Rudd was running second at the time and ended up in 28th position. And the 12th car of Jeremy. Oh, and Jeff Gordon is off the course. Now, there's something you don't see very often. That's up in turn seven where we saw Dale Jarrett just a moment ago. He's back on the track, but how much damage has it done to the car? Definitely lost the lead. Well, that was Jeff Burton's right there with him. So we know he lost at least seven seconds because Jeff Burton was seven seconds behind him just a moment ago when we talked about it. 
So for the second time this afternoon, Mark Martin has the lead of this race. And now Burton will go to the inside at the end of this straightaway heading toward turn number 11 and take seconds from Jeff. Gordon has to take it easy here for a lap just to see if, if there was a lot of damage done to the car. It didn't cut a tire. He wants to, to get into these corners pretty easy and get a feel of the car once again, get his rhythm going again if everything is okay. Jeff is the hometown hero. He was born just a few miles up the road from Sears Point in Vallejo, California, moving to Indiana early on and growing up there. He calls Pittsburgh, Indiana his home, but really, he was born in Vallejo, California. See a little damage to the front bumper of his car. Very slight, though. Now, here's where he had this problem the last time. As you see, Jimmy Spencer in the midst changing right side tires. Jerry is right there. Guys, the vibration for Jimmy Spencer to decide to come in and go ahead and change tires rather than taking a chance on having a tire going down. He has some damage in the left front nose. That's where that contact came down in turn 11. Left to go with Bobby Devaney. Four tires, and Spencer is down and away. At his best finish of the 1999 NASCAR Winston Cup season last weekend at Pocono, coming home in 14th. Here's what happened to Jeff Gordon. Okay, comes in, looks like he makes a normal entrance into the turn. But I guess it maybe was a little bit hotter than it looked. and Just like DJ a while yep. ago. As a matter of fact, Mark Martin behind him smoked the right front tire. Mm -hmm. He was in hard mm -hmm. enough, he smoked the right front tire. But look at him go through, through that plowed field back there. Yeah. But he knows that he can't stand, he can't stand to get stuck. So that's why he was going there so rapidly. Jerry Punch. Ordinarily, a driver would try to explain to his crew chief what happened, but Jeff Gordon has Larry and Jonas and they can't talk. All he can do is squeak on the radio. All he said was, Ray, I'm off. I'm off. Ray said, don't worry about it. We'll relax. we got plenty of laps, plenty of time. We'll catch him. Get back online. A long afternoon yet to come. Our coverage continues from the Point Raceway after this. Stay with us. Surfing, you can take a hot air balloon ride over this beautiful valley, or you can just go biking and relaxing. This is a beautiful area of the country, and we're always glad to come here to Sears Point. And you can keep track of whatever is going on in NASCAR on their official website, www.nascar.com, NASCAR Online. All right, 54 laps completed. We are less than two away from the halfway point. 56 laps will be the halfway marker, and Mark Martin continues to hang on to the lead after Jeff Gordon got off course. Mark is about seven and three-quarter seconds ahead of Jeff Burton, and Ricky Rudd takes another position. He's up to fifth now, passing Joe Nemechek. And Nemechek tried to come back because Rudd got in the corner just a little bit too hard, but you can see he was not successful as we look at the back bumper of Ricky Rudd's car. Comes the tide floor through turn number 10. Headed down the straightaway. Hard braking right here. That's the entrance to the pits there on the right. And Gordon is caught back up now to Jeff Burton. As you indicated, Ned, he took it easy for a couple of laps. Just checking out the car to see if everything was okay. And now he mounts the charge once again. Pull right back up on him. And meanwhile, while they're having that battle, Bobby Labonte's had some problems somewhere. He's dropped back several positions. He came by here, looked like he was running okay, but he went from a, a 14th position back to 7th, 16th again. We understand he did get off course once again, so Bobby Labonte is having his problems as he tries to hang on to second position in the point standings. Jeff Burton has moved up 10 positions. John Andretti really is the one who has gained the most since the drop of the green flag. He has picked up 22 positions. And Jerry Nadeau is having transmission problems, got off course again. And you look at Tony Stewart. He has caught Jeff Gordon and Jeff Burton. And he's done it rapidly, Benny. Just a couple of laps ago, he was, he was about two and a half, three seconds behind him. But now he has caught them. Six top ten finishes in the last seven races for Tony Stewart. Somebody uh, questioned my whether uh, he is from Columbus, Indiana, or Rushville, Indiana. They call him the Rushville Rocket. There's a very easy explanation, sort of like Jeff Gordon's situation. He was born in Rushville, Indiana, 
and grew up in Columbus. And when he comes back to Indiana, he lives in the house in which he grew up. He has bought it and remodeled it, putting extensive amounts of money into it, but uh, really has a nice place in Columbus, Indiana. So that's the explanation of that. Okay. Bobby Hamilton has passed Rusty Wallace and has gone to seven. Rusty just continues to go back. As Vinny said, but the longer he runs on his tires, the worse his car seems to get. This is on board with Bobby Hamilton as he looks back at Rusty Wallace, the Briggs and Stratton on board camera. There's Rusty Wallace closing right up on the back bumper. Now they'll start down the S's. And Wally Dolan back off course. He just came back out onto the racetrack and takes an off course excursion in the Bud, Bud Chevy. Michael Waltrip putting heat on the three car of Dale Earnhardt for the 21st position. Remember Earnhardt got tapped and spun up in turn seven and the whole field went by. Well, Earnhardt's worked his way back up. 2.22nd, so he's passed about 10, 12 cars since we saw that incident. Elliot Sadler moving to the inside of Chad Little. Trying to take over 23rd. Terry Labonte makes a pit stop. Terry was running in the 17th position. Down to John Kernan. It's a four-tire change for Terry Labonte, plus a major chassis adjustment in the left rear of the car. The pit stop was routine. He's off and away. They remind him 3,400 RPM, so he doesn't break the speed limit leaving. Once again, four tires, major pit or a major chassis change with wedge on the left rear. And overall caution has come out on the race track. And let's see if Terry Labonte, he did not get back to the start-finish line before Mark Martin came, came across it. That could have been a major situation for Terry Labonte. It's a debris caution. You see it on the racetrack. But Terry Labonte could have been the leader of this race right after this because everybody else will come into the pits. And the debris, it appears, is in turn number 11. That's going to bring our second overall caution onto the racetrack with Mark Martin leading. At Sears Point, we have a overall caution and pit stops being made. Kyle Petty is pushing Michael Waltrip to the pits because Michael is out of gas. John Kernan. Dale Jerry, your point leader is in. Left side tires going on. They've already changed right. They've made a track bar adjustment trying to improve forward fight. He got to Jerry Punch. Mark Martin, four tire change, air pressure, wedge adjustment. The 24 car just now leaving pit road. No adjustments for Jeff Gordon, but he is exhausted. They may start looking for someone to get in the 24 car. We'll update that in a moment. Tony Stewart is down and away. The big concern here on pit road was Jeff Gordon, who's at Laranjana, said, I need ice, I need water, and I might need help. Let's go to Bill Weber. Well, another outstanding pit stop for Jeff Burton's crew. What they did is they added a round of wedge to try and help the car because it was loose on the right-hand turns. They also made an air pressure adjustment to try and give him more forward fight. They gave him ice packs and fluids. Now, directly behind Burton's stall is Kyle Petty's car. The hood has gone up on there. They continue to work to try and get the toe correct on that car. Kyle's struggling around this race course here this afternoon. But he certainly did Michael Walter a big favor because Michael was out of gas down in turn seven, and there was no way he was going to make it back to the pits, but Kyle got behind him and pushed him to that area. And Michael has been refueled and rolling again. That was a huge break. While we have a moment, we'll tell you again about the big activity down in San Francisco. Now, there is the area of Piers 30 and 32 where all the activity is occurring this afternoon. Now, our coverage begins at 9 o'clock tonight. And we will have bike stunt streets, skateboard vert, and women's speed climbing. Plus, Chris Fowler will be hosting a special recap of X Games' greatest moments, some wacky moments, and a history of San Francisco as it relates to the X Games. That begins at 9 o'clock tonight on The Deuce. For more, log on to ESPN.com, part of the Go Network, go.com. There's the beautiful city by the bay, San Francisco and the Golden Gate Bridge to the north. 
There is a lot of a uh, lot of rolled up rubber marbles as they call them in turn number seven and they're going to uh, bring out the brooms and perhaps a jet dryer and get that uh, stuff off the racetrack because that is very slick. Yeah, and that's why we saw several cars go off up there. They got a little bit too wide and got on that stuff and shot them out into the sand. So while we have the opportunity, we'll take a break with more than half this race completed. 59 of 112 laps completed back in a moment. Point Raceway in Sonoma, California for the St. Mark Reagan 350 NASCAR Winston Cup. Uh, stuff off the racetrack because that is very slick. Yeah, and that's why we saw several cars go off up there. They got a little bit too wide and got on that stuff and shot them out into the sand. So while we have the opportunity, we'll take a break with more than half this race completed. 59 of 112 laps completed back in a moment. Point Raceway in Sonoma, California for the St. Mark Reagan 350 NASCAR Winston Cup race under caution here at Sears Point. They're actually working in other spots along the racetrack besides turn seven, but that's where the concentration is. Getting the marbles swept away to make the track a little more safe. And you wonder why they're sweeping these marbles? Because if these cars get in them, either the front or rear tire, if you're going in the corner and get in with the front tire, it won't turn. You get in the back tire, it'll spin out. We'll show you exactly what we're talking about. There's Earnhardt having trouble up there. Bill Elliott goes off in the corner. Tommy Hubert, same problem, gets in the corner, can't turn into the sand he goes. Let me see Rich Bickle, the 10-10-345 car through the sand. Dale Jarrett gets in there, gets the front tires in, in the debris, will not turn. Off he goes. Wally Dallin back, gets the rear in there. I think the front started first. And Jeff Gordon, he had the same problem there as Mark Martin goes to the corner as Jeff Gordon, the lead of the race, gets down in the dirt and gravel. And that's how Jeff lost the lead. And there are, of course, safety innovations all over the track and in the cars, but there's also some on pit road. Right, Doc? Indeed. A few weeks ago after that frightening incident in the car FedEx series where a, a crew member was saved by a helmet, Bill Simpson offered to give helmets to NASCAR Winston Cup crew members to wear. Well, this is the first time we've seen a team actually wear them. These are pit crew helmets. Sean Parker, who's the rear tire changer for Mark Martin and Sean, these helmets being worn for the first time. How well can you see and uh, any problems at all? Well, Jerry, the vision's real good on The only problem that we're having a little bit is just this little cone right here in front. But other than that, the side vision's real wide. There's no problems at all. And you see our first two pit stops have been real good, so I don't see a problem. You basically wear them during the pit stop only and take them off to do your other work. Now, I understand that Pat Frassard from Racing Radios has wired all the helmets, so you have all the wiring and radio. You can actually hear everything that's going on. Yeah, it's just like what the driver has. We have a microphone inside in case we have a problem on the pit stop, and we can talk back, you know, to the jack man or the j crew chief and know what's going on. So it's just like being in a race car, and everything's fine so far. So these helmets have a lot of visibility. We'll have Sean turn to the side. You see how they're cut out so far on the side. They have great peripheral vision. The only problem they may have to work on is a little area in the nose. They have to look down to actually change the tire. But safety here, critical. This is the first team to wear these. We are told that Jack Roush may have the 99 team in these next week at Daytona. Let's check on more safety further up pit road. Well, Jerry, this is a history-making day for the NASCAR Winston Cup Series. For the first time, all the cars on the race track are using a mandatory wheel tether on both the front wheels. Now, the design of that is to encourage the, real, the wheel to remain attached to the car in the event of a violent crash. This is the first race they've been mandatory. They were used voluntarily in earlier races this season. Next week at Daytona, teams have been told here at Sonoma they will run a mandatory, mandatory hood tether tether and that is to serve the same purpose for the hood obviously that the wheel tethers do for the wheel to try and keep the hood attached in case of a violent crash you can also look forward to that hood tether being adapted to a situation where it will also be used on the deck lid so nascar continues to look and add safety measures to both the crews and the cars safety of course is on the mind of everyone especially when you come to a crash like this now this turned out to be a lot bad looking than it actually turned out to be but look at Steve Park's car completely overturn in the air and come down on all fours and Steve walked away. That that concrete re retaining wall if it had caught one of those front tires it might have sheared that tire off and the wheel tether fortunately will be able to keep those tires on. We saw a few moments ago that Jimmy Spencer was shown as the leader of the race. He has since come in for a pit stop and so we go back now to the top five being Mark Martin Jeff Burton, Jeff Gordon, Tony Stewart, and Rusty Wallace. 
Being flagged to restart our save Mark Craig in 350 here at Sears Point. Mark Martin out ahead of Jeff Burton and Jeff Gordon. Now Terry Labonte was up ahead of Mark Martin and others when the green flag dropped, but quickly he was passed, and so Terry Labonte has gone a lap down. Stacked up pretty good there back of Jeff Gordon. That's Tony Stewart. Rusty Wallace. Joe Nemechek. and Gretty and Kenny Irwin completing the top ten on board with Rusty Wallace. You mentioned Terry Labonte getting past. Something's wrong with his car, Bobby. Didn't get off to a good start, and he's running very slow going down into turn 11. For a taste of the race, let's check out the telemetry from the State Fair Corn Dogs. See how fast Rusty's going, his tachometer. Tim Tart touching the brakes. Goes down to about 5,600 RPMs. Now he will start accelerating. 52. He'll start accelerating off the corner. Up to 8,900. Shifts gears. Right on the back bumper of Tony Stewart. Now he'll accelerate, accelerate down the chute, I think this is called. And he'll go down in the corner to the squeeze, we called it last year. Cannot make any head wheel and get on the inside of Tony Stewart, so he'll have to follow down the S's. See Rusty touching the brakes just a little bit as he enters these corners. And somewhere right here, he'll just nail it and run up. What's the RPM in mile per hour as it goes probably up to 125, 30 miles per hour getting into turn 11. He'll be the slowest part of the racetrack. See, he gets down to 38 miles an hour. Wow. I had no idea the car would be that slow in this point. That's right. For the one car, Steve Park hit just a moment ago. We see Rusty Wallace was about 140 miles per hour there. He picked up 100 miles an hour from the time he left turn 11. To yeah. John Andretti and Bobby Hamilton are having a good battle. We're looking back from the Bragg Briggs and Stratton onboard camera. Bobby Hamilton to John Andretti, who is making his 175th NASCAR Winston Cup start here today. As far as drivers who have competed in all the races this year and did last year, he has gained the most point positions compared with this time a year ago. He was 21st in points last year and is 14th this year. Finished third here at Sears Point last year and eighth at Watkins Glen, ranking him fourth in total number of points scored on road course races in 98. Now well, Dale Jarrett is moving back up toward the front, the points leader. Around Kenny Wallace. That'll be for 12th. And... and 43 cars trying his best on the outside of the four. Can't quite make it. That's the eighth and ninth positions they're racing for. So Jeff, brother uh, John Andretti, still trying to take that spot away from Bobby Hamilton. That remains about a car length and a half behind. There up front are the front runners. It's Mark Martin, Jeff Burton, Gordon, Tony Stewart, and Rusty Wallace in the top five. 66 of 112 laps completed. When we come back, we'll have an update on Gordon. Leader of the day is Jeff Burton, who was able to get around Mark Martin a lap ago. He did so entering turn number 11, but really didn't outbreak him. He just drove around him. That's the area of the course they're in right now. And we thought maybe Mark let him by so he could gain five bonus points as we watch Jeff Gordon now close in on Mark Martin. But that doesn't appear to be the case because Burton's uh, pulling away. Pulling away. He, he is. We thought he might be just that. Right. Here's how it happened. Coming into turn 11, Mark slowed down. Jeff Burton went down on the inside. Of course, the finish line's not too far from here. So we thought, well, maybe he's letting his teammate go by and get those five bonus points. But uh, as you say, he's been pulling away since then. 
Jeff Burton will be 32 years old on Tuesday. Meanwhile, Jerry Punch has an update on the third place runner, Jeff Gordon. Just prior to the last pit stop, we heard Jeff Gordon say that I need water, I need ice, uh, I need some help in the car. Ray said, how's the car? He said, the car is fine, but I'm not. We told you Jeff Gordon had a sore throat and some laryngitis all day yesterday. He was having basically honey and lemon with tea, trying to get the throat better. He still can't talk. He told me prior to getting in the car, I don't feel that bad right now. I just feel a little bit weak and I can't talk. Well, suddenly the weakness became more and more severe, and now he's just trying to hang on. Ray asked him, do you want me to get someone to get in the car? And Jeff said no. Then Jeff's next question was, how many laps are left? That might be a clue. He's about to be worn out. Although, he's putting, he's giving some oh. guys all they can handle that in turn 11. <laughs> and he gives a bump to Mark Martin in turn number 11, but can't take the spot away from Mark. So Jeff remains in third. Here's the Bud Race recap. Jeff Burton, our current leader, had led the last two laps. We've had four lead changes, total of three full course cautions, and the average speed is at 76 and a half miles an hour, and Jeff Burton is off the pace. The leader loses several spots. Came up 20, it looked like the engine died, and maybe he switched to another ignition bar. Bill Weber, what's going on? He only has fourth gear. It's a transmission problem. Right now, he only has fourth gear. Wow. Drops him back to fifth. That's going to drop him way, way back. Watch as he just tries to putt putt off turn seven up there. And he'll have to make another pit stop, too. He'll have to be bad for that. But as much as you need those transmissions here. Oh, and we have Derek, Derek Cope into the tires. That's up at the top of the hill. Yeah, that definitely will cause a caution. At least Jeff Burton will, will be able to go into the pits now and check out and see what's wrong with his car. And Jerry Cope has jumped over the tire barrier and the inner and the uh, wall up there. We see him moving around in a car. And I think we're within the pit window so that it can go the rest of the way after this. Let's see what happened to Derek Cope. Comes in the corner, and all of a sudden, the car just goes straight like the left front tire might have been down or something. He drives into the tires and just drives right through them. And up on the bank, now from the onboard, State Fair Corn Dog on board. There he comes. It's like the left yeah. front tire went yeah. flat. Yeah, that's the way it looked. That's too bad. Derek uh, needed a good run here today, and unfortunately, he it's not been a, not been a good year for him. He's missed six races. Didn't compete at Pocono last week. And there's the crowd looking down on Derry Cope. It's going to be a while before they get this car off the racetrack. We'll return with the pit stops in just a moment. During this full course caution as a result of Derry Cope's crash. Everybody on the lead lap taking the opportunity for the stop. Here's John Kernan. After the last round of stops, Dale Jarrett took the track in 14th. Right now, he currently runs 12th. He's the first of the leading lap cars to make it into his pit stop. They'll do four tires. Fuel, DJ said the car was pretty good, but they're still, they took a half a pound of air pressure out of both of the front tires. Pit stop looking pretty good right now to Bill Weber. Uh, Ricky Rudd is here on the edge of his fuel window. He's going to get a clean windshield, four tires, and fuel. He needs to be better on longer runs to Jerry Punch. Jeff Gordon can make it on fuel. Can he make it on energy? He's down and away. And Gordon, once again for the third time, will not beat Mark Martin out of the pits. Martin, a four-tire change, a slight air pressure adjustment to tighten the car up, and he is down and away. Gordon gets out second, a battle for third coming out. I don't know whether Rusty Wallace or Tony Stewart got to the line first, but NASCAR will determine that as everybody else makes his way back onto the racetrack, including Jeff Burton. We are under caution for the Derek Cope incident at the top of the hill, turn three. Goes in the corner and the car just refuses to turn. The State Fair Corn Dog goes right in the tire barrier and through the tire barrier up on the bank. And that's where the car still is. They've got it down off the banking, but it's still buried in the tires as they try to get that car 
off the racetrack. We'll run 112 laps here this afternoon. 73 have been completed, and we'll be back in a moment. Caution here at Sears Point because of Derek Cope's crash. They're still working on getting the car off the racetrack up at the top of the hill, and so we'll be under caution for at least one more lap. Jimmy Spencer has the lead of the race again. He is off sequence in terms of pit stops, so he's the leader right now with Martin, Jeff Gordon, Tony Stewart, and Rusty Wallace, the top five. California overhead shot courtesy of the Pennzoil copter cam there on the far right of your screen you can see the field making its way up the hill through turns two three four five and six they're being led very slowly by the pace car we are still under caution because of Derry Cope's crash but Cope is back on the racetrack they got him down off the tires and he's back out there let's check out a Cope pit summary Mark Martin Lost a position. He's second to Jimmy Spencer. So did Jeff Gordon, Tony Stewart. Jeff Burton went from 5th to 23rd. Remember, he has a gear problem and will continue to have problems. Jeff Bodine, however, changed two tires and moved from 21st to 7th. They're changing two tires to give him good track position. And boy, they sure accomplished it on that particular set of pit stops. Nemechek remains the same. And Rudd gains several positions, or rather loses several positions. So does Hamilton, Andretti, and Kenny Irwin goes all the way back to 15th. And Mark Martin didn't actually lose that spot, but Jimmy Spencer decided to stay out. And I guess Spencer could not make it the rest of the way, so he said, well, take, I'll stay out and lead some laps and see what it's like to run up front on a road course. You know, this is the second time this afternoon that he has led under this situation during the caution. He is off sequence in pit stops and so remains out and picks up the bonus points. He led five laps at Watkins Glen last year and is in the lead once again here at Sears Point. We thought they were going back green, but they are not. Instead, they have brought the track crew out to uh, soak up some oil that's been put down on the racetrack. More from Bill Weber. And, Bob, that is a huge, huge advantage for several teams down here. Originally, we thought 40 to 42 laps on fuel. Some guys aren't sure they can make it. And when they just stopped on the, under this caution and fueled up, a lot of guys know they're on the edge of the window, and a lot of guys figure they're going to be on the outside of that window looking in at the end of this race. A lot of teams really need two more caution flag laps to guarantee them reaching the finish. Of course, there is no guarantee in racing, is there? No guarantees, but I think where that oil came from was Brett Bodine. He had made a pit stop, and, and as he went up the hill, Benny, we saw a lot of smoke. There he is in the pits again, apparently with a transmission problem, John. Yes, Dad, exactly. Uh, a leak in the transmission fluid. In fact, you can see where he's sitting un on pit road. The uh, fluid leaking from the transmission, the team underneath it trying to get it fixed. The NASCAR officials checking it out, but they still have not gotten it fixed. There is oil uh, almost, or transmission fluid, a considerable distance around the racetrack. NASCAR and the track crew out there cleaning it up right now. Green flag to resume the NASCAR Save Mart Cragen 350. The green flag going to be coming out here at the beginning of lap number 79. Green, green, go to the right. At the moment, Jimmy Spencer leading. And he gets loose at the line. Now there's a battle between Jeff Gordon and Mark Martin for second position as they go up the hill. Who's going to win this little battle? It may go to Jeff Gordon because he has the inside line on that right-hander. And it looks like it will. And here goes Jeff Gordon by the Tom Hubert car, closing on the back of Jimmy Spencer. And Martin also trying to get the inside, inside of Hubert. Now Hubert is not on the lead lap. He's two laps down in 37th position. Jimmy Spencer still has the lead, but Gordon is about to gobble him up. Here comes Tony Stewart, and also Rusty Wallace and Joe Nemechek to the inside of Hubert. Tony Stewart in fourth position, and once again, he's showing that he has taken to this series very well. Now let's see if Jeff Gordon can outbreak Jimmy Spencer down in turn 11. Take that lead away. He's going to try. Spencer's trying to block. Oh, and Tony Stewart's trying to get a good line so he can go 
Did I turn on the inside zone? No, that didn't work too good. <laughs> uh, let's cross that one off the book. Oh, oh here we go for the lead. Yeah, here goes Gordon. Yeah, he got that traction off the corner. His tires are much fresher. And uh, he's been getting good traction off of that corner all day long. It worked for him. Too. And Jeff Gordon retakes the lead on lap number 80. Here comes Mark Martin down to the inside of Spencer. Wow, this going is going to be a good gutsy move up the hill. And he takes second spot, Doug Mark. Great move by Mark Martin. Wow. Jimmy Spencer had his best start of 1999. Today here at Sears Point started fifth. His best finish of the year was last weekend at Pocono 14th. And there's contact between Stewart and Spencer. Stewart passes them and also bends off a challenge from Rusty Wallace. You better get on out of there, too. <laughs> <laughs> More from uh, Jerry on Jimmy Spencer. Guys, not pitting was the only opportunity Jimmy Spencer and the team had to try to stay out and get track position and hope for a caution flag. They're going to have to pit in about 10 or 12 laps. They came in last on lap 61. They couldn't make it. It looks like their strategy might not have worked because he's now backsliding. His tires are just worn out. Can you say some racing here, Jeff Bodine, on the Jeffrey Bodine, I should say, only got two tires, but he's hanging right in there so far. A lot of traffic down in turn number 11. Terry Labonte, Michael Waltrip, Wally Dollenbach. They're running back in about 30th position. Meanwhile, up front, there's Gordon Martin and Stewart. Rusty Wallace trying to get around Jimmy Spencer now. This is where Mark Martin a little bit ago drove up beside. Jimmy Spencer took that spot away. Rusty was not able to do that. Now, maybe we'll try to outbreak him down in turn seven. No. Nope. Dale Jarrett moved up into the top ten once again. He's in eighth position trying to protect his points lead. He just got passed by Ricky Rudd, moved him back to ninth. Ricky Rudd looks back at Dale Jarrett. On board the tide ride. And you see Rusty Wallace on the inside of Spencer. And Nemechek closely behind. So Spencer will lose two spots up in turn 11. Joe Nemechek has had a very good, consistent run here today. He's run in the top 10 just about all afternoon long in the Bell South Chevy. Well, I said he lost spot, but Spencer fights back and stays in front of Nemechek. Well, again, we know that Spencer is going to have to pit here before long, but he is certainly given... Everybody a good battle here, despite the fact that he's got quite a bit of damage up there in the left front of the car. That came way back in the race when he and Bobby Labonte got together. Oh, and Nemechek run over the curb, had to get off the throttle, which allowed Jeffrey Bodine to come up and challenge Nemechek. And we see Ricky Rudd on the inside of Jeffrey Bodine, tries to take the spot away as DJ watches. Takes the spot. Yes, he does. He's driving very aggressively. And those well. will do it here, yes. Now we watch Nemechek as he tries to get on the inside, tries to outbreak Jimmy Spencer. He will do that, take over that spot. Moves him up in the fifth. Let's see if Brad can get the traction off of that corner. Nope. Not what he needed to make the pass. There's Jeffrey Bodine and Dale Jarrett. Jeffrey Bodine's most recent win was on a road course back in August of 96 at Watkins Glen. Has three road course wins, including here in 92 at Riverside in 84 and the Glen in 96. Spencer holding off Ricky Rudd's challenge for that sixth position. Who would have thought that? <laughs> Even Jimmy Spencer yeah. said last week, no, we're going to Sears Point next week. I won't be very good. Here he is in sixth position holding off one of the best, Ricky Rudd. Well, right now, because I think Rudd, when he goes down the corner, might be able to do something about that. 
There's Bobby Labonte. Been an up and down day for him. He's been off course at least twice that I can think of, maybe more, but he's in 14th. Yeah, he's uh, picking some cars off. He was 18th when after the pit stop, so he's moving towards the front. Bobby Hamilton's in a lot of traffic. Ward Burton is right behind Bobby Labonte. He's running in 14th spot. There's Ward. Sterling Marlin, the course Chevrolet, the 40 car there, does not love road courses, but he's doing a pretty all done good job. He's in 15th position. On board with Sterling, who won the pole at Pocono last weekend. Sterling did lead 14 laps here last year at Sears Point, has not led yet today, but is having a good run. Bobby Labonte is all over the four-car Bobby Hamilton. As Bobby tries to take over 12th. It's almost like that rear bumper is loose because I can't believe the back of that car is bouncing like that. Surely it isn't bouncing like that. There was contact between Hamilton and Earnhardt earlier in the race that may have caused the bumper to come loose. Now er, uh, Labonte looks inside of Hamilton. Hamilton tries to trek, protect the position, but a nice move by Bobby. Well, he's going down in there as fast as he could and smoked that right front tire, but he got the spot. Have to be careful when you drive in there hard. Don't want to lock the brakes and flat spot those tires. There's the leader, Jeff Gordon. His advantage over Mark Martin is about a one and a third seconds. Tony Stewart runs third. And last lap, Tony Stewart was faster than the first two cars. A little bit, but a little faster than Gordon or Martin. Rusty Wallace is fourth, and Joe Nemechek rounds out the top five at Sears Point. Back at Sears Point, where Jeff Gordon is leading after 86 laps of 112 in the same Mark Cragen 350 NASCAR Winston Cup race. Looks like Rusty Wallace trying to give Tony Stewart a bit of a battle. There's uh, Mark Martin, of course, in second spot. Rusty Wallace, the past few laps, has been faster than the top three. Tony Stewart now has fallen back a bit. As I mentioned a few laps ago, he was faster than front two, but that last time, he was the slowest car of the top six. At the beginning of the show, we talked about how the points could change as a result of this road course race here this afternoon. Well, as far as the points leader is concerned, that's Dale Jarrett. He's currently running in seventh position. Jeff Burton is having a bad race for the second week in a row. He has transmission problems and has dropped all the way back to the final car on the lead lap in 31st position. As we see some activity down in turn number 11 once again on board with Sterling Marlin. And Bobby Labonte was right in the mix of that. He got on the inside of Jimmy Spencer going into that turn. He's already passed... Uh, John Andretti and is coming up on Jeffrey Bodine. Bobby Labonte is coming on. He's now moved up to ninth place. He's picked off about nine cars since this restart. And of course, he is second in points headed into this race. Fourth place, Mark Martin. He's running in second spot. Fifth place, Jeff Gordon is the leader of the race. There's some damage on Kenny Schrader's car. Bill Weber has an explanation. Uh, this isn't a tough one, Bob. Believe it or not, he ran into somebody. Is that right? <laughs> That's it. Thank the, you very much, Bill. Well, I'm glad I could contribute. <laughs> but the big news for Schrader, or the bad news, I guess, is that obviously that's closed off some air to the engine, and it's really running hot. In fact, the temperature gauge is pegged. Jeremy Mayfield takes an off-course excursion, but uh, Schrader's uh, temperature gauge is pegged, so he's really hoping he can live to the end here. Back in 17th at the moment. of the other point standing seventh in points dale earnhardt he's running back in 20th spot ward burton eighth in points is currently 13th jeremy mayfield ninth in points we just documented him going off course momentarily back in 15th right now and 10th place terry labati is in 32nd a lap down yeah he got a call caught a lap down on a green flag pit stop just as he was coming out of the pits. The caution came out. The leader went by him just by a couple of feet. And it really was a devastating situation for Terry Labonte. In the battle for eighth position, Bobby Labonte chasing 
Jeffrey Bodine. Pretty equal on speed. Down the chute, headed for turn seven. I think those two tires, uh, Jeffrey only took on two tires on the power team, car number 60, and I believe that that is hurting some. It gave him great track position, and he's still better than where he was, much better than where he was before he made that pit stop, so apparently it was a good call. He was back in 21st, now he's running in eighth spot. Hardy's field summary showed you we have a Chevy leading, a Ford in second place, and a Pontiac in third. And here's another Pontiac trying to take a spot from a Chevy. Bobby Labonte is going to get the job done in turn 11. He now moves into the eighth spot. Labonte has not led a lap here yet this afternoon. Coming into this race, he was the only driver to lead 14 of the first 15 races. Andretti and Jimmy Spencer back for 10th on board with Bobby Hamilton. That's a good battle there for 10th, 11th, and 12th. Hamilton is the 12th place car right on the back bumper of John Andretti. Say hello to Richard Petty again. He's, uh, ooh, what smoke out of the 43. I guess he just smoked the tires going into that turn. Of course, Richard Doan of that STP Pontiac number 43. If you haven't been with us uh, during the weekend and you don't know, Richard Petty was in intensive care for about a day and a half. He is still in the hospital. He is expected to be released probably tomorrow. But Richard, we know you're watching. We're helping, hoping that you get out of there very quickly and wishing you the best. Apparently about with some bleeding ulcers. Put him in there in the hospital, but the King fights back. So we wish him the best and our prayers are with him as his car is really in the thick of battle here. Trying to get into the top ten. As we watch this battle and you, we talked about Jeffrey Bodine just changing two tires. So now you understand why track position is so key on difficult racetracks like Sears Point. Where it's so hard to pass. To see the 43 car. He gets a run on Spencer, and he might have him this time. Spencer fights back. You, know, you think that was an unusual place to pass. We've, we've talked about seven, turn seven and turn 11 out breaking them there. I've seen several cars pass at that particular point on the raceway, so they found something there that we didn't know about. Dale Jarrett made several passes there earlier. Ooh, Bobby Labonte moved right up on the back bumper. Spencer thought he was going to tap him there for a moment, but didn't. Looks like I saw something hanging off the left rear of Jimmy Spencer's car, like, like there's a piece of metal or there it is. I don't know exactly what we're talking about, but it's hmm. yep, something has been torn loose in some of those bumps that he's gotten out there. Oh, and Hamilton gets off the track. We see him off the track. We see cars going by. Yeah, that cost him. Here comes Ken Schrader, Kenny Irwin. Kenny Wallace didn't quite get by, but it looks like Mike Skinner might in the 31 car on the inside. And there's Dale Earnhardt right there also. The advantage that Jeff Gordon has over Mark Martin is about 1.6 seconds. And Jeff has a three and a half second lead over third place, Tony Stewart. That's the way it is with 91 of 100 laps completed at Sears Point Raceway in the St. Mark Cragen 350. Stewart third, followed by Rusty and Joe Nemechek, who was the leader. Began to drop back, now has come in for his final pit stop, rejoins the action. We have heard in the last few laps that Jeffrey Bodine was having transmission problems, and now he's off course. Well, if, he's, again. if he's like hung in fourth gear, that certainly would be a problem because you use the transmission to slow the car down. Watch him going down turn seven. If he doesn't have this transmission to help slow him down, the brakes, if he gets in too deep, the brakes just will not do enough. But Kenny Wallace on the inside of the square D car, and Jeffrey was trying to give him room and got in that debris and through the dirt he goes. So that great pit strategy that they worked out to get him up in the top. Oh, another car up on the wall here is Ken Schrader. Just like the one car oh, he, that he stays on the roof. Yeah. Steve Park landed on all fours, but Schrader is upside down in exactly the same area of the racetrack that Steve Park had his crash early on. We 
see that's exactly the area where the pace car comes onto the track also and the 2000 Monte Carlo moves on to the racetrack or is about to to bring out a overall caution. Well, all we can do is hope. Looks like he's pulling him out feet first. Oh, man. All right. There he is. Wow. Okay. You just kind of hold your breath and, and don't say anything until you know the status, but wow we are sure glad to see kenny emerge from that tangled mess <laughs> trader saying boy did i do that he said wow <laughs> let's take a look at it again it's just about the same type of crash he goes over once one and a half times and then rolls back on the hood Looked like he was going to roll on the wheels, and all of a sudden, whoa, he's going to go down and talk to somebody. No, nope. uh -oh. guess he just ran across the racetrack. Maybe looking for somebody, but I think he's uh, more interested in... He was he was in the thing. You know, remember a few moments ago when we saw those cars uh, passing Bobby Hamilton down in turn 11, there were a lot of cars that were running awfully close together there, but we didn't see him make a gesture. All those cars have gone by. <laughs> Had to take one last look back at his car. He doesn't have a very long walk to the pit area. He's saying hi to Robert Presley. <laughs> said hi to his crew. He said, said hi to Kenny Walsh, his teammate. So Schrader is okay, but the car is on its roof up in the area of turn number two, and we're under another full course caution in the St. Mark Franken 350. Kenny Schrader there on the right of your screen has just about made it back to pit road as the team rescues or the safety crew rescues his car. We are under a full course caution because of his incident. Here it is once again. Just like the one car, Steve Park, backing in the corner over the guardrail. Kenny Schrader gets out. He's a little angry. He says, yeah, I'm fine. Here's Steve Park, the pencil car, and watch that. Boom! Back on his wheel. But both drivers were able to walk away from the incident. Well, this will be Schrader's first DNF of 1999. Others that have not, have not had DNFs are Mass and Labonte. Down to Jerry Punch. Kenny Schrader walking toward us. Uh... First of all, Kenny, are you okay? Yeah, we're up. Uh, I was starting to get a little tighter in a couple of fast turns. I was down in the right rear here, hung the right rear in the slick stuff. She started coming around, just held on. I knew it wasn't going to get pretty. You hit, did you have trouble getting out? We saw one of the workers trying to help you out with your feet. Uh, were you trapped in the car at all? Yeah, I was just upside down, and things were condensed a little bit. And I did the seat belts before I took the steering wheel off. And I know better than that, but I uh, just had trouble, a little trouble getting out. All right, Kenny, we'll let him walk back behind pit wall and get back toward his pit. Obviously out of breath. What a wild ride. Fortunately, these NASCAR stock cars are safe, and he can walk away. But, uh, boy, you say road courses aren't exciting and they uh, can't be a little bit dangerous? Kenny Schrader just showed you. Well, he sure did. But, again, the good news, no injuries. There's the Bobby Hamilton car, an extended pit stop during this caution period. They're Probably sitting... Sorry, Ned, they're setting the toe in on that car just like they did Kyle Petty's car earlier in the day. 95 laps completed of 112 here at Sears Point. It's Gordon, Martin, Stewart, Wallace, and Nemechek, the top five. Sears Point Raceway, Sonoma, California for the NASCAR Winston Cup. Save Mart, Reagan 350. Earlier today, you saw live coverage of other road racing. In Watkins Glen, the NASCAR Bush Series competed in the Lysol 200. There are the top 10 finishers with Dale Earnhardt Jr. pulling out another victory over Ron Fellows, Mike McLaughlin, Jack Baldwin, and Jason Keller. And so while we await the uh, cleanup to be completed near the Kenny Schrader crash, We'll tell you more about the X Games from San Francisco, just down the road from Sears Point Raceway. Coverage begins tonight at 9 o'clock Eastern. X, X Games. 
There have been 80,000 people down in San Francisco on Piers 30 and 32 to watch the X Games, and you can see it at 9 o'clock Eastern time tonight. That's and probably how many people we had here today at Sears Point Raceway, somewhere around 80,000 people watching in a beautiful, beautiful day. There they are, some of them. Hey, guys, gals. Once again, we have uh, been here for about four days and had just incredible weather. Nice, comfortable temperatures and really a really nice weekend. The location is Sears Point Raceway, Sonoma, California. This is Abar Craig in 350, the 16th race of the 1998 NAS 1999 NASCAR Winston Cup season. Down to Bill Weber. Well, this caution, uh, certainly a bad break for Ken Schrader and company, but it could be a huge break for some of these guys that were right on their fuel window. Most of them now believe they will be able to reach the finish and will not run out of fuel. That's disappointing to a couple of teams down here that thought they might be able to outlast everybody on fuel. But now most of these teams at the front of the field believe they can reach the finish without fitting for fuel. This caution has helped that situation, of course. We have been under caution for the last couple of laps. Trader's car is in a safe position now. They did not tow it back to the pit area, but they did uh, get it well off the racetrack. Down to John Kernan with a report on Dale Jarrett. An anxious moment for the points leaders crew here on pit road. DJ radioed the crew just moments ago and said, hey, talk to the 10 spotter. Ask Ricky to uh, take a look at my left rear tire and let me know if it's flat. Well, Ricky uh, looked at it, said it was okay, and as he came by, DJ got the thumbs up from the crew. They told him everything looks all right, but he was worried for a moment that he might have a left rear tire going down. He is up there in seventh position. Up from 29. That's quite a movement forward. Just amazing. Ricky Rudd has had a good day. He's in sixth position. This side of his car looks okay, but when you look at the left front, it's a little banged up. Mm -hmm. He made, certainly made contact with someone. Well, apparently, it's not hurting him too bad. Rub the letters off the front of the car there, and it's bent that sheet metal back onto very close to the tire. But apparently there's no rub, and that's the good thing. Down to Bill Weber. And he uh, told his crew just when the caution came out where they were discussing whether or not they were going to pit that basically he's responsible for that. That's kind of how he got his way through all that traffic after the last green flag using uh, the chrome horn, as they say. So Ricky's responsible for that damage on his own. Said it probably didn't help the car a whole lot, but he had to get to the front or as close as he could. And uh, they figure they're in good shape, and obviously they can reach the finish now. Hey, Bob, we're coming around ready for a green flag this time. Lights out on the pace car, so as they move through the S's, we are going back to green when they hit the line. Jerry Punch with a report on Jeff Gordon. Well, we don't know how, how Jeff Gordon's going to be able to do, but uh, he's not even answering the crew on the radio, but he's just trying to conserve energy. When Ray talks to him and says, just be patient, take your time, all Jeff does is cue the radio to let him know he hears him. He's conserving every bit of energy for these final few laps. And there will be 14 to go when they get the green flag. Is Tony Stewart going in fits? Yes, he is, John. Well, I was just told by one of Dale Jarrett's crew, Brad Parrott, that uh, he said, hey, the 20 car's got a flat tire. He's coming in. And Tony makes his way onto pit road. And it looks like the left rear tire is down on Tony Stewart's car. Man, oh, man. That is a tough break. And there are still 30 cars on the lead lap. Green, green, turn the right. He has been up front all afternoon, and now as we get the green flag on the 99th lap, Stewart is in the pits with a flat tire, and he's going to fall into about 30th position. Well, up front, Gordon pulls away just a little bit from Mark Martin. And Jeff Gordon has picked up the five bonus points for leading the most laps here today. Question is, can he last 14 more laps? Physically, can he last 14 more laps? He can stay on the racetrack. On board with Rusty, who's third. Now the 
Pennzoil copter cam. If he goes on to win this race, Jeff Gordon would be the only driver to win from the pole here at Sears Point. And he's done it twice. I mean, yeah, to have done it twice. Others have done it, but he would be the only one that's done it twice. Two years in a row. We Bernie Irvin did it one time, didn't he? Yep. And Mark Martin did it in 1997. Here's the points as of now. Gordon would stay in fifth position. Rusty Wallace up two to ninth. And Jeremy Mayfield down one. A lot of point changes in the second ten. And of course, next week at Daytona will mark the halfway point of the season. that championship is concerned. Yes, we're only about halfway. But right now, Mark Martin is thinking about one thing, past that 24 car, and he's glued to the bumper of the DuPont Chevrolet. He's going to keep the pressure on and certainly make Jeff draw every ounce of energy that he has. That's back in 13th and 14th. Kyle 13th and Dale Earnhardt in 14th position. It's been another up and down day for Kyle Petty also. Who currently is the highest that he has been in the race. But he's been as low as 39th. So he's running exactly where he started. They've been working on the toe in every pit stop and... Apparently, we've got it pretty, pretty good. Yeah, it looks like it's in good shape. Oh, Sim. Jimmy Spencer back there smoking that right front tire. It's Darrell Waltrip, who is still on the lead lap in 15th position. Did a pretty good job this afternoon on the road course. Baseball tonight is coming up next here on ESPN. We're going to go over our scheduled off time but when we conclude with the race and a battle up front as Mark Martin gets alongside Jeff Gordon trying it on the outside that didn't work the boy he made a great try man he is right on that back bumper the DuPont Chevrolet trying to put all the pressure he possibly can and of the top six we get speeds on the top six every lap. The slowest one among the top six that lap was Jeff Gordon. And Bobby Labonte was the fastest. The pressure is on Jeff Gordon. You wonder about Tony Stewart. He's back on the track, of course, but he's in 27th position. A tough break for the rookie. Rusty Wallace has a good view of what's going on ahead of him. And he's going to watch Mark Martin this time going down in turn 11. Is Mark going to try once again to outbreak Jeff Gordon? Jeff really buries it down in the corner. Mark can't do it this time. Oh, he's going to try to get on the inside as he come off the corner. No, not quite. Jeff smoked the tires a little getting into the corner. That allowed Mark to close right in, but Martin cannot take advantage and cannot make the pass as Gordon has the lead with 10 laps to go. And Bobby Labonte has gotten by Ricky Rudd and taken over the fifth position. Looks like Mark Martin really gets through 11 and off turn 11. So good. We saw him yesterday in happy hour. Mark Martin goes to first gear down in turn 11. That might be one reason he's able to leap off that corner so well. Look how close those three are nearing the end of the race. You just have a feeling that something's going to happen here in the last 10 laps. 
And a call to Joe Nemechek, who has run an extremely consistent race today. He's in fourth behind this trio. He has, has Bobby Labonte right on his back bumper. Bobby is definitely one of the fastest cars on the racetrack. Oh, oh, and Martin gets off course. Wow. Just about lost control. That was see Bobby Labonte into the tires and colliding with Nemechek. Come on, come on, come on, you're okay. He's still running. And Nemechek okay. spins, I guess sure. Nemechek has a flat tire or something. He spins on turn 11. Will it bring out caution? a caution? Yes. yes. It is. Caution is out. Full course caution. They'll have to get the tires back into position in turn 11 for one thing, besides the fact that Nemechek spun, but he has gotten going again. Well, let's take a look at that again. First of all, Martin goes off course, but doesn't really lose anything because of it. No, and then Bobby Levine, the green car, watch him. He comes down through there, and he has too much speed. He's either going to knock Joe Nemechek off the racetrack or either get into those tires. And he chose to get in the tires and still hits Nemechek a little bit. And then Nemechek comes off the corner and just and spins. I'm assuming one of the tires is flat, but I'm not sure. Probably so. from Ricky Rudd's onboard camera. It's Labonte and Nemechek just ahead of him. Nemechek and Labonte both smoking tires, trying to get their cars slowed down. Both got in the corner a little bit too hard. So Ricky Rudd will move up to fourth spot now. Oh, man. What did they put tires there for, Bobby said? <laughs> <laughs> He sends them bouncing. And look at the damage he has on the front of that interstate battery of Pontiac. And I guess Nemechek did not cut down a tire. I guess he just tried to gas it off the corner yeah. and spun around. He just wanted to get on out of there and it broke loose on him. Well, Bobby Labonte has extensive damage to the right front of the car. And again, we talk about the points. He's second in points coming in, may have damaged his point chances right there. The beautiful Sonoma Valley, north of San Francisco. Just one horsepower there. We've had a lot of it on the racetrack here today, are concluding this race with less than seven laps to go now under a full course caution. Bobby Labonte's crew tends to the car, which was severely damaged when he made contact with the tires and Joe Nemechek. As soon as we're finished with coverage of our race, we'll have baseball tonight coming up next on ESPN. This is going to be a big blow to Bobby in the point standings because there are still 30 cars on the lead lap. And He's going to be back there, and it's going to be hard in the remaining laps that we have to fight his way back up to there, even if the car is capable. But we saw the damage on it. And I would guess this is another break for Jeff Gordon because the more laps he can run under caution and kind of relax and get his bearings, the better things are for him. Well, he was certainly getting the pressure as we say the body go back out of the track. He was getting the pressure from Mark Martin. And sure was. Maybe this does give him a little bit of a breather. It certainly cuts down on the number of laps that Mark would have to pass him. Well, it didn't look very pretty, but Bobby Labonte's back on the racetrack. In 30th position. You wonder if those cars in front of him checked up when they saw Mark Martin almost go off the racetrack and they had kicked up a little dust there and if if maybe they checked up and Bobby came in there with a full head of steam and saw that he was going to run over Joe Nemechek if he didn't turn to the right. And he's probably going to wreck either way. Both uh, both he and Nemechek both as we saw both of them smoking those tires trying to get stopped so they both Nemechek trying to defend his position and Labonte trying to take it away. I think both of them got in the corner awfully hard. Still 30 cars on the lead lap, as Ned said. Let's take a look at it one more time, the incident between Bobby Labonte and Joe Nemechek. There's that dust you're talking about, that, and all of a sudden he tries to go on the inside of Nemechek. Nemechek pulls over, and right there, both of them are smoking tires trying to get stopped. But unfortunately, Bobby Labonte has tires in front of him, and that's what caused the damage to his car. And if he would have cut, cut over there 
uh, to the left a little bit to stay on the racing portion of the track there. He would have hit Nemechek. And uh, they both were the wrecked hard. Because both of them still came out of it bad anyway. Down to Jerry Punch. Well, you got a feel for both those drivers. I was standing in Joe Nemechek's pits a moment ago when he came in and got four tires. And uh, I think he's frustrated but also heartbroken. He told the crew he's driven his guts out. And they thought they were going to get a great finish today. Tony Blevers said, don't get up, partner. We're going to put four fresh tires. you got a few laps to catch some people and make up some spots. But Joe Nemechek just heartbroken, thinking maybe he's going to come out of here with a top five finish. And uh, it would have, could have, or maybe should have been, but uh, not going to happen now. Nemechek back to the 29th position. With 105 of 112 laps competed, they'll be going green in just a moment. Stay with us. To Sears Point Raceway, where we are still under caution, but as you can see, their lights are not flashing on the pace car, so it will be coming in, and we're going to resume the battle here as Jeff Gordon and Mark Martin and others clean off their tires and get set for the restart. And there'll be six laps to go. Yep, this will complete lap 106. Could get interesting. It was interesting before the caution. Weaving back and forth, trying to clean all the debris off the tires. So when they go in that turn one and make that left-hand corner, the car will stick. Go, go! Green, green. Gordon got himself a good start. Rudd now fourth. John Andretti fifth. Jared is up to sixth. And Marlin... Ward Burton, Dale Earnhardt, and Kenny Irwin complete the top ten. And Irwin and Jimmy Spencer are side by side, banging on each other, and Spencer is going to take the spot away. Yeah. Kyle Bennett is going to drive on the inside of Kenny Irwin. Well, couldn't quite make the pass. Remember, Spencer has fresher tires. He made a green flag pit stop way back there when he was running up towards the front. Ooh, Kyle coming in there hard <laughs> in that turn. He's going to get the spot. And he it out in the sand. Yeah. That's going to cost him dearly. Loses eight or ten positions before he's able to come back on track. Man. Oh, and there's Ricky Rudd on the track. Right oh. the racetrack. Oh, my goodness. Ward. Hard contact. Ward Burton hard into the tires. As is Rudd. Man, that was quite a crash, and it occurred right in front of our broadcast position here, near turn number ten. They are racing to the line, and Gordon, of course, will win the battle there. And with 107 laps completed, now the caution is out once again. Rudd's trying to drive his car out of there. Well, that's good that he's and okay. And Ford Burton is starting his yeah, car, too. So, and so apparently both drivers are okay, so that's good news. But both of those race cars are torn up. Yep, they're they don't, used. They don't know how bad they are. There is a considerable amount of... Uh, and right now, Ned, they probably don't care. <laughs> A lot of tires have been uh, moved onto the racetrack as the crowd cheers as Ward Burton and Ricky Rudd both pull away because that was a very hard impact. There's Ward making his way to pit road. We'll take a look at a replay and see what happened. Oh, Rusty Wallace come gets through the dirt. And Ricky Rudd trying to avoid Rusty Wallace going back on the racetrack gets off the racetrack. When he goes back across, that's when Ward Burke came in and banged into him. Mm. Mm. Heavy damage there. Yeah, another couple of guys who had really run good here all day, kept their nose reasonably clean, had good finishes going, both uh, Ricky Rudd and Ward Burton. Now they're going to red flag the race. Because it's going to take a while to clean this up. Just like at Richmond last year, Ned, when, when DJ was leading the race, it's going to take a while to clean this mess up. These fans in California, NASCAR says, will not be deprived of a green flag finish to this race. So just shy of completing 108 laps, the red is out while they repair the racetrack and get the tires back in position. We'll take another break and be back right after this. The red flag is out because of a crash here in the S's involving Ricky Rudd and Ward Burton. We're on the 108th lap, and the cars are stopped up near turn 7 at the end of the chute. There is the work that's being done here 
in the turn nine area. Well, one thing they didn't want the race cars to come back down through here and run through all that debris. That, you know, that can cut a tire very, very easily. See the NASCAR official standing up there. Once again, we'll show you exactly what happened. It's up in front of the there was seen Rudd, and here's going to come Ward Burton, and across the racetrack comes. Wow! And mm. oh, and, and we see Jerry Mayfield's going to have some damage as well. He got hit on the front as well as looked like up on the deck lid. Ward Burton's car got airborne before coming back down on all four. Now watch Rusty Wallace. He's going to miss a corner here. Right there, Rusty goes straight, and when he comes back on the racetrack, Ricky's trying to avoid him and runs off in the dirt himself and just cannot ever get him back under control. And then, boom, there's the impact with Burton, who goes down and slams hard into the tire barrier and the guardrail. And that's the situation at Sears Point. And you wonder what made Rusty go off there to begin with. Did he have a tire going down, or uh, that was unusual to see him go off at, at that point of the racetrack? the onboard camel with Rusty as he awaits the restart of the race. See, he went on around and, and took the caution flag still in third place. Now we're going to replay from Rusty Wallace's in-car camera. That's turn seven. Got thrown a bit out of shape. He was very fortunate to get that thing back on the racetrack. That there was dirt there he could run across and not yep. a guardrail to run into. Yes. And all heck broke loose behind him. While we are in red flag, we will uh, have baseball tonight coming up in just a few moments. Carl Avich, however, is standing by with a report and while we are in this red flag situation we're going to go to go to carl for a preview um, thank you carl we are back live at sears point where the red flag remains out here's the situation we just had a big crash involving ricky rudd and ward burton they're okay but they tore away some tires from the guardrail and put down some debris on the racetrack and so the red flag was brought out because we've completed 107 laps and uh, this race is 112, so less than five to go. Jeff Gordon is the leader of the race. Mark Martin is second. Rusty Wallace third. Now John Andretti moves up to fourth. And Dale Jarrett is up to fifth place. The second five are Sterling Marlin, Jeremy Mayfield, Jimmy Spencer, Dale Earnhardt, and Kyle Petty. And you see the 22 car sit sitting there on pit road and the guy standing there with her hands on her hips. You can't work on the vehicle during a red flag condition. You can observe, you can see what's wrong, you can get ready to work on it, you can't work on it. And this is what happened. Rusty Wallace has gotten off the track and then Ricky Rudd did. He spins, comes across the racetrack, clips Ward Burton, and Burton in the outside fence hard and also catches Jeremy Mayfield. I'll tell you what, a lot of cars made it, you'd think that more cars would be involved as narrow as the racetrack is, but Fortunately, everyone backed off, slowed down. See Tony Stewart passing cars on the grass. And that's where the cars have been stopped near turn number seven. Down to Bill Weber. With Ray Evernham, two easy questions. How's your car? How's your driver? I think they're both hot and tired right about now. Uh, you know, this uh, hopefully is, is giving him a chance to, to catch up, catch his breath a little bit. They're pretty hot in there. Uh, Mark's car seems to be a little bit better than ours right now. Hopefully... Uh, Hopefully Jeff can hang on, but if not, uh, just want to see him get a good, safe finish, and uh, hopefully uh, we'll go out of here with a decent finish. Mark looks a little stronger in 7 and 11. Yeah, Mark's out breaking us a little bit, though. Like I said, our car's been pretty good all day, so hopefully uh, it'll let Jeff catch his breath a little bit, and uh, we can we can hold on. If not, uh, just get a good, safe finish out of it, and we'll be happy. I know Mary's watching uh, on TV today. Yeah, and I want to say hi to her and Loretta. Uh, my mom-in-law's in the hospital, and uh, she's recovering, and I know they're watching, so I just want to say hey. Okay, Ray Evernham hoping this respite will help his driver get a second consecutive win at Sears Point. To John Kernan. And I'm with Jimmy Finnegan, and he's talking uh, to Mark Martin. Just a little bit, a uh, few last moment instructions. And Jimmy, can you uh, can Mark get a shot at Gordon? I don't know. He's uh, he's we're pretty good. You know, Mark's uh, 
the last session before the yellow flag, we were right on his bumper, but uh, with four laps to go, you know, it's going to be pretty tough, but Mark's the best, so we'll see what he can do. That's Jimmy Finning, Mark Martin's crew chief. Well, San Francisco is a place to be this weekend. We are here at uh, Sears Point Raceway, located north of San Francisco, of course, down in the city itself. The X Games, which have attracted nearly 80,000 people in the last couple of days. And now we're about to go to 3Com Park on the south edge of San Francisco for the baseball game, which is coming up tonight. We're going to uh, go away for a preview of that game. However, we will be back for the finish of this race when the green flag comes back out. Right now we're under red and uh, we have less than five laps to go. So let's go now to 3Com Park on the south edge of San Francisco. And let's But meanwhile, the uh, Save Mart Craig in 350, it's just about to get the green flag and complete this Save Mart Craig in 350K from Sears Point Raceway. They will come down and complete lap 109 and get the green flag. Jeff Gordon, Mark Martin, Rusty Wallace, John Andretti, and Dale Jarrett are the top five. These last three laps should be something to watch. Yep, I think you're right, Bob. I think this break had to help Jeff Gordon because it, he was exhausted. We talked about it all day long. He isn't feeling that well. Has to help. And he also was able to get some water back there and a little bit of fluid. You know he feels a lot better than he did 30 minutes ago. All the drivers were offered a drink of water during this red flag period. And, of course, most of them took advantage of it, including Jeff Gordon. So here we go now with the final three laps of the race. Pace car pulls off the racetrack. Gordon cleans the tires to make sure all the rolled up debris is off the tires and that the tires stick well. Three, three. As he approaches turn number one, here we go. Brings up a good jump. Go back three Collins out in front of Mark Martin. there for sixth place. There was a big bottleneck going up into the turn. A couple of cars got off in the dirt, but they're okay. If you watch Mark Martin try to move in. Gordon maintains the lead as they come down toward the chute. Mark Martin less than a car length behind and a couple of car lengths separating Mark from Rusty Wallace. So apparently there was no problem with Rusty Wallace. He just got off course there. We speculated that maybe he might have had a problem with tire go down or something, but that's not the case because he's still running good. Now, this is a spot that Mark Martin has been getting. He's been out breaking Jeff Gordon going in turn 11. That's 10. The approach turn 11 coming out for two laps to go. Can Mark outbreak Jeff this time? No, not this time. John Andretti is going by Rusty Wallace, takes over the third position, and Kyle Petty has moved all the way up to six. He's got to buy a number of cars since the green flag flew. And there are two laps to go now as Gordon heads up the hill once again with Martin in hot pursuit. We want to remind you of a couple of things. First of all, the X Games at 9 o'clock Eastern time on the deuce. And stay tuned. As soon as we get the checkered flag, we're going to be throwing you back to 3Com Park on the south side of San Francisco and John Miller for tonight's baseball game involving the Giants and the Dodgers. Turn 7, where Jeff had a problem earlier today, got off the course. This time he gets through. Martin has only won one race so far this year. That was at Rockingham. Sterling Marlin is off the racetrack. As once again, Gordon comes down through turn number 10 and comes to turn 11. Coming down for the white flag, Mark. You've got two more chances at your best spot. Looks like Jeff. Oh, oh, and Mark, and Mark really gets sideways. He really tried. He got a little bit too deep. Got the back end out. Jeff Gordon will take the white flag. One more lap to go. Here's the white flag coming out for Jeff Gordon. There will be a couple of more opportunities that Mark will have to make the pass. But so far, Gordon has been successful holding him off. 
Right here, Mark has been getting to this corner. I thought maybe he might try to drive under. Could not as Jeff gets to that corner well. John Andretti has moved into third position. And I mentioned a moment ago that Kyle Petty moved to six. He's dropped back to about eighth now because Jimmy Spencer has moved up to six. No driver has ever won four consecutive NASCAR Winston Cup races on a road course. If Jeff is able to take the checkered flag, he will be the first driver ever to do it. He's through turn seven. There was a good passing opportunity for Mark, and now really there's only one more, BP. Turn 11, this is the S's. Mark is right there. He's on the back bumper, and he's driving his heart out. So is Jeff. The left-hander turn nine. They'll go back to the right at 10, and then down for 11. Downshifting on the brakes hard. Martin is trying everything he can to pull even and pass Jeff Gordon. He's got one last shot. He looks like he might try it from the outside. Now he goes to the inside, but no, the car is sideways on him once again. And here comes Jeff Gordon to take the checkered flag and win the St. Mark Reagan 350 at Sears Point. His fourth road course win, second here at, St. at Sears Point. And the fourth win of 1999, he also won a Daytona, Atlanta, and California. He's going to go to our McDonald's winner's circle. Later tonight, we will have the interview for you on RPM tonight. Jeff Gordon wins here at Sears Point. Now, let's go to 3Com Park in South San Francisco for tonight's baseball game. Here is John Miller. Career, his fourth straight road race victory, the first guy ever to do that. Mark Martin was second. John Andretti, his best finish since he won the Goodies 500 a few weeks back. Points leader Dale Jarrett, sixth on Sunday. The rest of the top 12, Jeremy Mayfield, a good run. Kyle Petty knows road courses. He's a former winner back at Watkins Glen. Daryl Waltrip matches his best finish of the year. But the boy wonder, once again, ruler of the road. You wouldn't believe the things that happened to me out there today. Uh, you know, just the things you saw were... Uh, we're only half of it. Uh, right before that first pit stop, my seatbelt came undone. Uh, you know, I went off the track. Uh, I was missing gears. I mean, I made a lot of mistakes saying that a lot of it was because I just wasn't feeling good. I, uh, I don't like to use that as an excuse, but I was just beat. You know, Mark Martin ran me really hard, and uh, he's, he's awesome. And uh, I tell you, I really thought he had us there. But uh, it was more than laryngitis because, I mean, I was real dehydrated and, and just uh, real hot. And, and you know just wasn't hit my marks I, I could tell i was just kind of kind of getting worn out and i wasn't as sharp as i was i started making mistakes and that's when mark started catching us and thank goodness the cautions came when they did because they saved us gordon has now won four straight road course races and has finished either first or second in each of those last five prior to that he had an average finish of 13th and had led only 16 total laps in eight road course starts the man's been studying since the start of the 1997 season, he's led 215 of the possible 478 road course laps run. That is 45%. More race reaction. We're a little stronger than he was, but he had track position, and he was perfecting it big, and uh, that's what you're supposed to do at the end of the race, and that's what I did last year or a uh, year before to him, and uh, that's what you're supposed to do. Uh, I couldn't race with him on new tires, and that's why we lost the race. We had the lead. We should have just checked out on him, but we weren't fast enough. So, you know, he got by us, and then uh, we couldn't get back on him. We worked through a lot of problems, and uh, guys just did a great job, and didn't even have a problem in the race. The car just drove great, and and, uh, and things went really good for us. So, uh, finished third again, second year in a row. So, uh, getting the lights here. So, I really didn't need those cautions because I got right on Mark's tail, and I had my rhythm going, and I was staying right there, and everything was going good. Then the caution flag came, and Everything went bad then. And I wheel hopped the thing the last corner, and uh, I lost third to fourth to uh, Dan Dreddy. That was a bad deal. But other than that, pretty good run. Come down into turn 11, and uh, he uh, went in to shift the car, and his tongue broke. And uh, thank good Lord that the caution came out when it did. The man got an opportunity to fix it, put us all out of pit sequence, and it worked to our benefit. I dodged a lot of them out there. Uh, a lot of things happened right around me, and I got off the track once myself. and. Uh, yeah, I mean, anytime you come away from here and you, you know, you haven't torn your car up and you've stayed on the racetrack the majority of the day, you've done pretty good. Winston Cup points. Jarrett lengthens his lead on Bobby Labonte, who finished 27th. Mark Martin moving up one slot. Gordon and Stewart are still 5th and 6th. The rest of the top 12, but Rusty Wallace jumps up two slots. He is back into the top 10. Mike Skinner still holding steady at number 11. The Bush Series. 
more results as we send you to break. Not the day Tony Stewart had hoped for. A 15th place finish after starting second. Elliot Sadler gets himself a top 20. Joe Nemechek running near the front towards the end before catching some of that late race trouble. Rough couple of weeks for Jeff Burton. 36 at Pocono and 24th this week. This point to get us there. Curly Marlin last week's pole sitter. Jeffrey Bodine spent some time in the top 10 on Sunday. He finished in between the brothers Labonte. The road course veteran Ernie Irvin. An unlucky day in his home state. More finisher Jerry Nadeau also near the front until he caught trouble. Ward Burton suffered some extensive damage in his car near the end of the race. Barrett Cope also involved in one of the many crashes. The rest of the field for the Save Mark Craig in 350 at Sears Point. Ricky Rudd had it going on Sunday before retiring after a wreck. Same thing with Ken Schrader, who had one of the more spectacular flips of the day. Steve Park was the first driver to go flying. He completed only 24 laps. Butch Gilliland got only three laps in before he had to leave. The race summary showing a lot of caution, seven for 25 laps. Jeff Gordon continued his run as king of the road Sunday in Sonoma with his record fourth straight Winston Cup road course victory. And while Gordon's day ended in victory circle, it was the non-circular Sears Point track that left several Winston Cup drivers unhappy with their outcome. It's real disappointing. I mean, uh, I don't know how to describe it. I mean, it's feel like I'm back in the IRL again or something. I mean, it's just something stupid that happened to us toward the end of the race. But, uh, you know, these guys did a great job on this car. And, uh, and everybody at home is supposed to be proud of what this team's accomplished so far this year. Today was also disappointing on my part. I uh, spent a lot of time uh, passing cars that I shouldn't have been trying to do. Got behind a couple times and uh, uh, ended up uh, worse than what we needed. I guess it's mixed emotions. They haven't run like this all year. So at least we're up front. You know, we had a challenge. Uh, we were even talking about maybe having a shot at winning. So uh, we haven't been able to do that all year long. So that side of it is, is great. The frustration side is... The, the, the top five categories still a zero, top ten categories still a zero, but, you know, I'm here to race. I'm not here to ride. I could have stepped back and finished fifth, and uh, I wanted to try to win this one. I got a little high up there, and I kind of jerked it down to get down. When I did, I hung the right rear on the loose stuff. Took off from a little slide first. I said, all right, no way I could be this lucky. So I figured it had to get upside down. There was no big walls up there, so it had to get upside down. It did. Ken Schrader dropped one spot in the standings from 13th to 14th. John Andretti, loving father, devoted husband, and a pretty good dancer, gets his third top five of the season and moves up one to 13th. Michael Waltrip got a top 10 finish on Sunday, moves up two positions to 18th. We'll gear up for